Hello, good evening, and welcome to our Vampire the Masquerade Chronicle, L.A. by Night, Chapter 8. Who can you trust? Let's meet our vampires. Hi, everybody. I'm Alex Ward. I play Jasper, and once again, I'm very happy to be back. I'm Erica Ishii, I'm playing Annabelle, and I'm very happy to have him back. Hi, I'm Cynthia Marie, I play Nellie G, and I'm also very excited to have Jasper back. I'm so popular. B. Dave Walters, I play Victor Temple, undisputed Baron of the Valley, <laughs> and I have a number of questions. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Jason Carl from White Wolf. And on behalf of White Wolf and L.A. by Night, I'd like to thank some uh, important people who've been supporting us uh, for our entire series. And they are the Master Crafts people at Elderwood Academy, who have given us these beautiful dice tomes for our hunger dice. And the Master Crafts people at Dogmite for our beautiful dice boxes and my fantastic, soon-to-be-missed storyteller screen. It's so beautiful. Let's recap episode seven. The Coterie had reason to believe that Jasper was in imminent and lethal danger. And so they raced through the night to enter his subterranean lair. But they didn't find what they expected. First, they passed through the labyrinth, a place of mystery and horror. To say that it was weird is to say the least. They met a creature from legend and myth, a werewolf. But with the werewolf's assistance, they found their way out of the labyrinth and into a place no less disturbing, Jasper's Haven. There they found another vampire locked in a cell, a cage, a prisoner. Her name, Tara, who told them some very disturbing information about Jasper, namely that he held her prisoner and drank her blood, and worse, that he was her sire and had done this to her intentionally. The Coterie freed Jasper and were about to leave with Tara when Jasper's voice came out of the dark, inviting them to stay back into the haven where he could explain. And um, I see somebody who <clears throat> wants to say something. Excuse me. <gasps> hey, baby doll. Uh, sorry to interrupt a little game. Uh, no, no, I'm not. Uh, anyway, I've got a letter here from... Some jokers call the inner circle. Some sounds like some Camarilla bullshit. Uh, I owe some lick a favor. Got to get it done. Ah, you know how it is. God, by the way, no, don't make a deal with Beckett. Fuck that guy. Mm. <clears throat> by decree of the inner circle and by enforcement of the Justicars, let it be known that the Vampire of the Masquerade Chronicle, known as L.A. by Night shall return for season two. <laughs> and that said season shall commence in early 2019. Well, uh, that is good news, and I know all of you I mean, at home are to thank for your little uh, contribution, so I guess that means I'll be seeing you all again real soon. <laughs> Bye, baby. Calls me baby doll again. I swear to God, I'm gonna slit his throat. Mm -hmm. Ruin our assholes. I told you this. And now let's tell a vampire story. Thank you. 
The Front Door of Jasper's Haven by the L.A. River, late, late, late at night. The sounds of the freeway in the distance. Tara, startled, scared, uncertain, Eb, on guard, and Jasper. Well, go on then. Let's go back inside. Yeah, I don't think so. I think you need to come outside. Fuck I think we're that. done in there. Mm-hmm. Why? It's, you, you didn't like my place? I thought it was rather well furnished. Jasper. What? I said I'd like to talk about this. Do you want to talk about this, or would you like to all yell at me? I like the second option. I mean, we can do that, but I don't see that getting anything done. Please just explain yourself. Please. Sure. Say something. Anything. Okay. That makes me know that this, this, I mean, this can't be, this can't be true. Well, um, I am going to assume, seeing as uh, you destroyed my door from the inside, that you came in through the back way? And the back way goes through a rather unpleasant place. Am I? Yes. Mm. Yes, we got into your lair. We saw... The ah. cage where you're keeping somebody who Whoa. says that you, you, what? been feeding what on I? her. Right. Yes. He did. He did feed on me. He absolutely drank from me. Tara. Victor, don't let him take me back inside. He's not going to take you back inside. Fine. I can't go back in. We that can cage. have this conversation on the doorstep. They know about you now, monster. I've noticed. Thank you, Tara. You're so kind. Look. I didn't make the labyrinth you went through. I am not so full of myself to take credit for that. That's something I found. In fact, I found this whole place. And the woman in the cage, did you find her, just find her there? No, I put her there. Why locked up? Now, I'm gonna take a wild guess as to what she told you I did. Hey, I'm right here. Yeah, I know you are. I know exactly where you are. She said you turned her. Uh, mm, That's funny. Do you think I looked like this before I was turned? Put, put, just do the math in your head. Do you think I looked like this before I was turned? No. Tara does look nervous and a little troubled. Do you think that it, because I look like this and the person who made me looked like this, that if I made someone, logic would tell you that they would look like this? Would uh, they? Is that true? I just came to the labyrinth and we're way past logic. Is she one of those thin bloods? No. Not at all. You know I do things. You know I do things that I don't talk about. This is one of those things. Mm. Now, I would very much like to put her back inside because my job is to keep her there. No, what do you mean your job? I didn't turn her, I didn't make her, I didn't put her in there on some whim. I was told to keep her here and keep her from going anywhere. I don't know why. So you're just following orders and that's better than you deciding to do all of that on your own? Why, why am I the bad guy? Why, when we have a man who has recently within, I can't tell you how many very close nights brutally murdered a couple of people when we have a woman who takes power that's not her own. And we have you, who constantly risks 
risks exposing what we are every night. I do the thing I've been doing for years, and I'm the bad guy? Everything I've done, the reason why I'm standing here, the reason why my guts are fucking hanging out is because I thought you were in trouble, okay? So I Who don't told you need that? the attitude. Who told you I I'm was in trouble? I'm here to help you, or I was. Nick. Who, Nick. Nick told you I was in trouble. Nick was being compelled to be truthful. Right. Did he say I was in trouble? Did he say those exact words? No, but he knew where you lived, and yeah. we were worried. He did know where I lived. He was the one person who knew where that entrance was. Now, what happened to him, by the way? He won't be telling anyone else anything. Oh, well, that's good. Now, look. I'm going to assume she told you that she's innocent and that she was just taken some night. Tara begins to sidle around behind yeah, please. Victor so that you are between her and Jasper. The expression on her face is somewhere between fear and determination. I immediately, the knife spins out in my hand. I will put this right between your eyes if you move again. Jasper. <laughs> Don't let him put me back in there. Don't let him drink from me again. <laughs> She told you that. Why are you doing this? You remember when I told you I don't hurt people? Yeah. And that those people I killed the other night was an accident? You said there were mistakes. Everybody makes mistakes. Everybody makes mistakes. I don't hurt people. We're not people. I hurt things that aren't people. That's what I do, that's what I'm good at. She's not a person, you two aren't people, and unfortunately, Annabelle, you're not a person anymore. So yeah, you wanna know how I avoid hurting people? I do drink from her. That's how I avoid hurting people. She hurts the people, I don't. What do you mean she hurts the people? I assume she told you. She drinks from the people, I drink from her. What happens to the people afterwards? What happens to the people? This is messed up. She doesn't have a choice. You locked her in a cage. What else is she supposed to do? I locked her in a cage on orders. From, from who? who? Who, until recently, that you decided to become a baron? Who did we take orders from? Where do I still live? In what area? Under the barony of that specific man. So Abrams asked you to lock up this woman? I do jobs for Abrams. You do jobs for whoever's paying. I understand, I've never criticized your work ethic. But this... Yeah. Everything apart from my feeding habits is what I, what people pay me to do. I just found a way around hurting people the best way I could. But you'll hurt us instead. Have I ever hurt any of you? The kindred in general. Yeah. Most kindred are awful. And to be fair, we're all pretty awful. Jasper, we may not be people, but we still have something in us that loves and feels and wants things. And I don't think you're a bad person. I don't think that there are actually bad people. I think that people make mistakes and it's how they feel about them that really defines who they are. You get to speak right now out of extreme privilege. Do you understand what happens when, or what's supposed to happen when you get turned? 
You got to keep everybody. That's what you got to do. You got to keep all the important people in your fucking life. I didn't. I got to get rid of everybody. That's what I got to do. Now, I found a way to live with being what I am the best I could. I wasn't good in life. I didn't do nice things. So I tried with this extra life I've been given, this nice present I received, to try and not hurt people like I did in life. That's a very charitable interpretation of the line of work you're in, my friend. You also have charitable interpretations of the line of work you're in and the things you do with your life. And I have never denied any of it because you I do all it for the people asked. I care about. Both. I do it for you, for all of us. Calm down. One. I hear you. I understand what you're trying to say here. Right. Why did Abrams make you lock her up, though? You know, I don't always get the answer to questions. I believe it has something to do with the fact that something is happening in this city and she's not supposed to be involved in it. But that's about as much information as I got. Now, please, judge me on drinking the blood of others. Do it. No. I, I walk over to Jasper. Jasper, it never matters what we did yesterday at the end of the day. All that matters is what you do today or tomorrow. I... This is... It's wrong, but I... So is what you all do. Everything we do is wrong. I know, but we can be better. We can try to be better. We can all be better by explaining to everyone we meet we're vampires and asking them if we can have their blood? That doesn't seem like it's better. That seems like that gets us dead, is what that seems like. I, I turn and I look at Tara. She's still got the same expression of, of desperation and fear on her face. And she's squarely behind you now, so to see her, you have to turn all the way around with your back to Jasper. I do. I turn all the way around with my back to him and I look at her. And I give her a submerged directive. If you try and run, your legs lock up. You have to roll for that. Because yes. She, of course, is a kindred yes. and able to resist the compulsion. It's as mesmerized. Same as mesmerized. How do we do? Mm, three. Hmm. But with this, I actually don't know if it worked or not. She blinks, but she does meet your stare. She mouths the words silently after you say them. And when I turn back around, I sort of step over so she's not directly behind me anymore, so she can't, like, jump on my back type thing. You know? She uh, steps right. backward a few paces, looking Sorry. even more frightened. I don't let him do this. I don't understand. I do what? I'm not going back in there. Well, seeing as I have to repair my door and the lock now on my cage, it really doesn't matter if you go in or not. I have nowhere to keep you. No, that's not true. I do have somewhere to keep you. <laughs> she starts. I just to might not find you for days. Back up. Think, starts to back away from the coterie. You're not going back in there. Look. How do we handle this? Your your cage is wrecked. We can't let you back in there. If you're working for Abrams, fine. This is his land, but... Well, the thing is, is Abrams doesn't know what's in here. Abrams just knows this is that I live somewhere and I deal with things. This place is somewhere I desperately want to keep. This place is what keeps my mind occupied. That place you went through is what I do. I figure that place out. Why did you trap that other Nosferatu down there? What did he do? I didn't trap him down there. He's been down there since I found this place. That 
Even with all the blood magic over him? Or is that new? That man is how I figured out not to hurt people. I I didn't get a sire that gave me my first meal. I woke up, you know how when you woke up you were just you. We don't get that. We go through a very long and painful process and a lot of us don't survive it because of the extreme changes to our body. We, I, got turned and woke up to no one. Didn't know who I was, didn't know what I was, and had to figure all that out on my own. So I wandered around, figuring that out. Down there? Not down here. I eventually found my way down here, stumbled into, through these door that you so kindly destroyed, and found a nice living space with a funny door. And then I went through that door, and then I don't know how long I was down there. And I was down there long enough to the first thing I found that even resembled a person I ate. And I assume you saw that he's slowly healing. Because I didn't know what I was doing and didn't kill him, didn't remove the head by the ever so smallest bit. And honestly, I've been curious to see what happens when he wakes up. Why don't you just feed on him? Why are you doing that? You know what? Hang on a second. Tara. Turning around to talk to her? Yes. Okay. And I activate all. Backs up another another few paces. I activate all. I'm like, nobody's gonna hurt you. But I need you to understand something. <laughs> I'm not sure you, you stop. Can, not sure you can guarantee that, whoever you are. I'm like, and for the record, you just inadvertently adding a step to feeding doesn't make you any better than any of us. For the record. Didn't say you. Did. Why are you in trouble? Why are you being kept here? I'd rather not say. I think we're way past not saying. Hmm. Eve uh, produces a weapon from her, uh, underneath her jacket. It is one of the incendiary pistols that you recovered. I took the liberty of bringing it. But I'm like, uh, I think I need to understand the situation that you find yourself in, Tara because this is all horrifying and we've had a super fucked up night, but whatever you think of this guy, he's had my back for a long time. So I owe him to at least ask you why Bit Baron Abrams, who also had our back for a very long time, wanted you kept but not dead. Cause that's how things usually get done with us. So I need some answers. Help me help you, Tara. What if I choose not to tell you? What will you do? I mean, use rapid reflex. I'm taking out my my knife and I'm coming up to her. Oh. What? Take so out. I get what are you for doing? You take out the wicked sharp knife and you advance on her. Speak. I'm the bad guy. I do things and people yell at me. Everybody else. When I tell you who I am, you'll understand what you've gotten yourselves into. His problems are my problems, unfortunately. Our problems. Are you prepared to use that pig sticker? I am. No, I'd rather him do it. I would rather talk, but you're limiting my options, Tara. Help me help you. I've she, got a bigger knife. She looks around as if to try to figure out if she's got a chance of running. There's I, nothing around, of course, but the river, the highway, and the hills of Griffith Park. Tara, I wouldn't try to run. I am a lot faster than you think. And if He's I catch you, I'll toss you to him. He's kept me weak by drinking my blood, so 
You might be right about that. May so, so answer his questions. <laughs> May I attempt persuasion? You want to try it? Yeah. Go ahead and add your uh, your presence to it since you are using awe. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I saw three. I, saw, I read all the blank ones first. I was like, oh no. Oh. Okay. What's your uh, What's your persuasive argument? Help me help you. Like I, I don't. I want to find a peaceful solution here, but we're running out of options. I need some answers. She looks I, around one more time, and seems to decide that she probably can't make it if she tries. Tara, I. Nobody deserves to be in a cage. We'll never make you go back there. I won't let them hurt you again, but you we have to you, know. You don't know Please. what you're saying. My name is Terra. And until recently, it was Baron Terra of San Diego. Now, Victor and Nellie, you, of course, have heard that story. How the Baron of San Diego turned on the Anarch movement and declared for the Camarilla, a traitor to the Unbound. But you certainly haven't heard that she was in Los Angeles or that she's being held prisoner on the order of Baron Abrams. Why didn't Abrams destroy you? I think he wants to use me as a pawn. There are still those in San Diego who will do what I say. And I could be a valuable bargaining chip if he decides to trade me to the Camarilla. So, still think you can protect me? Keep me from harm and not let anybody hurt me? You're so naive. You believed it. Yeah, it's real nice you guys all got to believe that story. I mean, it didn't even make sense. You didn't even try. You just made up the first thing that came into your head. I'm your sire. You're a... You've got to be at least 200 years older than me. They almost bought it. I know. But you did take my blood. I know. That part is true. He did keep me in a cage. Yeah. And I have no problems doing it. <laughs> You're gonna find out that this is how it works. Annabelle, is that what he called you? This is how it works. This is how it's done. This is how we fight. Fuck your politics. People don't belong in cages. Being preyed upon. I don't think you're a bad person or, or a bad guy. I don't think you're a bad guy. I just, you can't let the perfect be the enemy of the okay or the good. I don't. We don't have to break the masquerade in order to feed, but we don't have to keep people in cages. There is an in-between. It's not a binary thing. People keep people in cages. We're better than those people. We're better than governments that have prisons. We're better than how the justice system works. We keep people in cages, that's what we do. We've done it forever. But it can change. I'm sure it could. I think you really believe it. She does. She does. Mm. Annabelle. Wow, where were you during the revolt? We could have used you. Look. I've never lied to you. Semantically, Ob no. Obviously, I omitted certain parts of what I do. But if this gets out, what I do, I'm immediately dead. I would never let that happen. There's nothing you could do. Literally, nothing you could do. Jasper, I have to know, have you been diablerizing? Have you been killing our own kind? I'd love to know, too. This ought to be outstanding. No. And if you haven't been diablerizing our own kind, 
and you haven't been murdering mortals and violating the masquerade, then this is workable. This is workable. I'm not saying I haven't. I'm saying I haven't in a very long time. The first time. Wow. I actually point my gun at her and I'm like, I would rather you find a way to survive this, but the color commentary. But, you know, seeing as that man's been healing in, in the labyrinth, maybe I never did. I thought I did. Is that man your sire? Oh, no. I have no idea who he is. I put the gun away. Except when she... Well, that's all, all very good, but they're calling you Baron. I Baron. am Baron of the Valley, but we're not in the Valley. Oh, we're not in your turf. You don't have any authority here. Well, I'm the only thing standing between him and whatever he wants to do or whatever hole he wants to throw you down. So I right mean, I now... I have one other place that I can keep you and you're not going to like it. They obviously didn't. You know, it's not so bad when you spend enough time down there. Oh, I think it's worse. I think the fact that you think that is... Dawn's approaching. All right, you've made whatever deal you've made. What are we going to do? We cannot stand here. I mean, we can. You're all welcome to go home if you like. We obviously have things to do, but this is my home. I might not have mentioned. There was a lupine down there. Really? Came through with us. Yeah. That's what happened to that door. So they know yeah, where you live too th- now. Okay. Yeah. I'm pretty confident in my ability to never be found down there. That's fair. <laughs> so not to seem self-centered, but what do you plan to do with me, Baron? Like you just said, it's not my turf. I might have to make a call, but it'll damage my reputation. Hmm. I can make it. Annabelle? <laughs> You're a lot of trouble and cause a lot of problems, but I work with them because that's how I get by and we work well together. Against my better judgment, I like you. And I don't like things that aren't people. I like you, Jasper. And I trust you. And I'm sorry for everything you've gone through. It's not fair. Don't. You have your significant people in your life. You have Mark. <clears throat> yeah. You know how many Marks there are? That's <laughs> right. And you have. Yeah. Yeah. You're lucky because I didn't get to keep mine. And she, she still walks around every day and I don't get to do anything. So I don't, that's not the reason why I do this. I don't care why he does it. You're gonna either have to stop me or let me walk. I think we both know walking's not what's about to happen, but I'm trying to find a way to keep your head on your shoulders. If you would like to call Abrams and have him send someone to retrieve her, that could be arranged. I think that would be the best plan of action. I need to know something before I call Abrams because he has always been good to me and I would rather not cross him needlessly. Convince me why you turned 
to the ivory tower. Why did you turn on us? Because it's over. We're going to lose. Abrams, Therese, Nines, that's all that's left of the Baronies. You, whatever you've got, what is it, the valley? What's that? A collection of houses. It's a bunch of petty fiefdoms. I believed. Oh, I believed. I believed in McNeil. I believed in Garcia. I believed in all of it. I took San Diego proudly for the Unbound. And I've run it for decades. But it is over. The hunters... It's not going to happen with the Anarchs. The Ivory Tower's right. These, these technologies that you all probably still use, they were bringing the hunters right to us. They're going to win. Those, those humans are going to win. I'm convinced that the Camarilla's way is the only way. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm new to all of this, but he said you're what, 200 years older than the rest of us? I mean, I'm just guessing. She You've been around. A couple of centuries. For a long time. And the course of human history is such that the old will always die out and the new will take its place. It doesn't happen with us. <laughs> well, new, it will. The new never get their shot. That's why the Anarchs exist. So the young could have a shot. We never get our shot because of people like you, Tara, who turn against it and go back to the ivory tower. I've been there. I'm not going back. It's ridiculous. The old You're ways wrong. will always become stale and useless. You're wrong, Annabelle. The only real path for us now is, is total secrecy, is to go back to the way it was. You can never go back to the way things were. And the 17th ever. century was pretty shitty for a not insignificant number of us. And I pull out my phone and I call Abrams. Going to make the call? Listen. You... Jasper, it's not too late for you, you know. <laughs> oh, yeah? Does she know that you're alive still? Oh, no. I'm very dead. On purpose, I'm very dead. Every single night that I'm undead, I put the people that I love in danger, but I gave them that choice. I asked them what they wanted. I... I'm trying to be good. I'm trying to stay away, but did you give her that choice? You are put through after a few moments of waiting. You give the proper code words, and eventually you recognize Abram's voice on the other end of the call. Victor, good evening. Baron, uh, we don't have a lot of time, so I'll get right to it. Mm -hmm. uh, I know about Tara. Ah, I see. Someone told you. More than that, I'm with her right now. What? Yes, there was an incident and she escaped, but she's what? been recovered. I see. I just, I take the phone. Sir, um, what's happened, Jasper? Unfortunately, through due to a miscommunication, my facilities for holding somebody got destroyed. So I need to relocate her. What is your condition? Are you all right? I'm perfectly fine. And your associates, are they all right? Everybody's fine. What is and the condition of your prisoner? Tara is unharmed. I see. Well, that's something. Is she in your custody? She is. Keep her that way. Some of my people will be with you very shortly. Okay. Will do. I hand the phone back. Say, um, we'll be in touch when it's done. Yes. Do that. And then I hang up. And I look back at Tara and I say, um, I actually believe you about the Inquisition. I believe you about the humans. And I think whatever's coming, we need as many of us alive or whatever we are in fighting as possible. So I have no desire to see you destroyed. 
And maybe Abrams is going to trade you, and maybe you will get to go back to the Ivory Tower. But it's not my choice to make right now. It's not my turf. And that's why the Anarchs always fail. When the hard decisions come, always make the wrong choices. You see? Why did I tell him you were unharmed? <laughs> She'd heal. Poor choice of words, I guess. You have a different problem. Do I? You do. What is that? What story do you think she's going to tell Abrams? It's very true. I can't take that from her. That's fine. You think Abrams will believe her? It's a crazy story. Would you, hadn't you not seen this, believed this story about a labyrinth and cells and someone feeding on other people and this boogeyman of vampires that lives under the L.A. River? <sighs> Yes, but I know you. Yeah. Yeah, but singularly, no one's going to believe it. No. With people cooperating a story, they'll believe it. Particularly Are ones that he trusts. Are you going to cooperate the story? Yes. Why? Okay. If all the years that I've worked with Jasper, I shouldn't have had any doubts. And I shouldn't have believed this woman here. She's a liar. And she doesn't deserve our respect. She turned on the Anarchs, went to the Ivory Tower. She's not strong. She's not like you. She's not like me. She's fucking weak. She should be destroyed. Tara takes that as a threat and she begins to change her body begins to shift and distend and alter its appearance as soon as she starts doing that mm -hmm. if possible I would like to use my soaring leap ability to rocket myself and double front kick her into the wall mm -hmm. anyone else reacting um, to what's rapid happening? reflex and back mesmerism <laughs> stop right now don't move I pick up the door. <laughs> <laughs> Things heavy, but you can do it. You lift it. My plan is just to pin her to the wall. Up to chest level. So, brawl plus, uh, make it athletic. <laughs> I do still have my knife out as well, but I haven't used it yet. Are you doing anything with the door? Are you getting ready I'm to do something with the door? ready to throw it if necessary. Mm -hmm. Nelly, you have backed up to a defensive position. Your knife is out. Knife's you've got been a, out. You've yeah. got a clear field a view. You can see that Ebe has gone into uh, a marksman's crouch and has the other pistol aimed in the general direction of Terra. And you have given a command which you must now stop right now. Don't move. That's two successes. Two successes. Ooh. Uh, ooh, a lot of successes. Uh, seven, including a messy critical. Seven, including the messy crit. So. Stop, don't move. You bare your fangs, your eyes flash. <laughs> you give the clear impression that you are going to use lethal force if necessary. She freezes, but it's too late. She's already changed and is no longer a vampire. She is a huge, shaggy wolf. Just as Jasper connects with her body. You were trying to double kick her and slam her into the wall. And then pin her there. And then pin her there. Only two successes. Splitting the pool because of the two different actions is difficult for her. She cannot dodge away from you. Uh, you slam into her. She bounces off the wall of the, uh, of the river, the cement. There's a, there's a crunch. You hear bones giving way. You think you may have dislocated a rib or two there in the, in the leap. Uh, but you've got her pinned against the wall. Her teeth are at your throat. Now listen to me. You're gonna be very still. Because even though I told them you weren't harmed, I can make up any story I like to justify anything I'll do to you. She tries to bite your face off. I'm gonna put the knife right in her mouth. Okay. Now you can either keep her pinned, 
mm-hmm. and take the bite. I try to dodge and lose the grip. I will keep her pinned and keep take her the pinned. bite. All right. Mm. We're going to have it. That is five successes on getting the knife into her mouth. Getting the knife into her mouth. So you like put it. We're going to reduce the damage because she's now biting a blade. Yeah. So um, take two two superficial damage. So that's two slashes that's been halved and reduced because you managed to jam the knife in between her jaws. You can hear the sound of the teeth on metal. (laughs) She almost got a good grip on your face, and she would have if you hadn't interposed the knife between you and her chomping maw. Jasper, get away from her. Not now. I'm Sir, great. should I fire? I take my- Abrams leg. wants her alive. As I've got, I'm gonna place it so my shoulder is against her on the wall. You got leverage. I'm gonna take my other hand and hold it around the mouth <laughs> like you do <laughs> the dogs. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm going to drag her back inside. As you drag, she begins to change again. The form of the wolf is malleable. It's almost clay-like in your arms, and you find it difficult to maintain a grip as the form shifts and flows beneath your arms, beneath your fingers. <laughs> Uh, make a, um, build a pool with uh, strength and brawl. Kay. Make sure you add your hunger die. Yeah, indeed. How far away did they get from us? Mm, barely 10 feet, if that. Yeah. That's two successes. Two? Yeah. That's all mm. happening right here. It's too hard to keep hold of her as her form goes indistinct and begins to reshape itself. She's changing back into a vampire. Nellie? In the middle of that, I'm gonna switch to the, the stake that I have. Mm. I'm gonna come up behind her and try to <laughs> stake her. Staking. A difficult maneuver at the best of times, but certainly not impossible. Mm. Okay, so go ahead and um, build your pool. I'm Let's make it. When she. Uh, I'd like to interpose between. The, you want to try to prevent the, the prevent the staking from happening. Prevent the staking. Oh, okay. You might stake Jasper instead. I would like. I want to put my hand in the way. Okay, you've lost your grip on her. You're trying to put your hand up between her and the stake. Now this is going to be difficult. Let's make it um, dexterity and melee. What? How, what, how much of a pool does that give you? Three, four, five die. Five dice. You're gonna need at least four successes to have um, have a chance. Jasper, mm-hmm. brawl and athletics. Okay. Brawl and athletics. Okay. Nope. One one success. One success. One tied. Ooh. Okay. Let's check for Tara. No. Staking. What are you doing? Why? Because I said she was unharmed. She's trying to escape now. I get that. Didn't you put some magic on her, whatever the hell you do, to keep her from running? She hasn't run away yet. The melee is convoluted. The stake misses. It grazes you (gasps) in the shoulder, and you take another superficial wound. That's halved. Damn it, Jasper. Tara is trying to escape out from underneath the two of you, trying to claw her way free. I switch to Daunt, and I just say, don't make us destroy you. Go ahead and make an intimidation uh, pool. Annabelle, you have the door ready to go. Three successes. She hisses at you, her eyes wide with fear, but she recoils and she begins to scrabble away on all fours. Please stop. She looks over her shoulder, keeps on moving. Please, you don't know what's out there. Better out there than in there. Is she running? She's scrabbling away on all fours. She hasn't gotten quite to her feet yet. She hasn't got any speed. I use awe. 
I didn't roll enough. What do you want to? You want to persuade her, <laughs> or maybe uh... stop? Okay. You are safer with this lot than you are out there. Ooh. Charisma and persuasion. Plus Add presence, presence right to here. it. Yep. I didn't roll enough dice. Ah, uh, <laughs> was your pull short? Yeah. <laughs> Burn a willpower to re-roll up to three. Three. Three successes. Her shoulders sag in the feet. She bows her head, st- sinks to her knees, stops moving, and she it's hard to tell if she's more terrified or more persuaded. It is at that point that Nelly, who is keeping watch and who has the sharpest eyes in the coterie, sees something very, very strange. You see a little red dot appear on Tara's forehead. And then you see a dot appear on Jasper's chest and Annabelle's. We gotta go. We have to move. Now! Now, someone's gonna shoot up, now. And there's one on yours, too. I'm gonna... Okay, folks, we got it from here. We got her. The dots begin to move around in the night and all converge on Terra. Thank you. She's slippery. Not sure where they came from or why you didn't hear them. But the five human figures come out of the dark. They're wearing riot gear. And they have rifles with laser sights. All trained on Terra. Good work. We got her. We're going to move her to a safer location. Thank you. Baron Temple. Baron Abrams would like a word later. By phone, preferably. The armed and armored men surround Terra, keeping their rifles trained on her. She doesn't resist as they shackle her and run a chain around her midsection. Her shoulders remain slumped in defeat, her head down. They haul her to her feet. And she looks at you one more time. You had a chance to do the right thing here and you didn't do it. I'll miss you. What was the right thing? To try to go back to the way it was? To at least let me go and try and make my own choice. Oh, you made your choice. The men indicate that there's been enough talking. Mm -hmm. And they are definitely men. They are not vampires. They surround her and start walking her away from Jasper's Haven. Are they out of earshot for mortals? They will be after a few moments. You would all Huddle up, as they say. I wait till they're out of earshot. They have vanished back into the night, and you hear the very distant sound of car doors opening and closing. No. I'm willing to concede the fact that you guys have all had a pretty horrendous evening. I'm sorry my home wasn't up to the usual state of hospitality. <laughs> we had a club firebombed and dropped on our head tonight, and that wasn't the worst thing that happened. Yeah, I know, right? It's really terrible down there. Um, look. I got, I have, I have two questions. And they're pretty simple.
One. What do you want to do? More specifically with me. I look at Eve and I say, could you check the status of the car we called, please? <laughs> and then I put the gun away and I say, we're monsters, man. You can't go around shackling people against their will, but by definition, we all prey on something. I mean, if it makes you feel any better, I just fed her bad people. That doesn't make me feel better. No. I am, it'll make you feel better in like 10 years. Um, look, second question is, and this is more just for me. Did you find anything interesting down there? <laughs> uh, I've only got like a little bit mapped out. Uh, There's quite a quite a bit we could tell you. Sabrina, about. the teenage witch here, is going through portals in the wall, and there was a dude that was in suspended animation, and there was a werewolf. I punched him. Well, you know about werewolf. You know about the werewolf. Yeah. It's pretty it's cool. Quite, there was really a werewolf down there. No, there yeah. Some, wait, hey, excuse me. I've been wandering yes. down there for like weeks. Oh, he got lost down there. Yeah, he's been recently. there four days. He's Did you there. draw the rats? Oh, the rats. No, I didn't do those. What? Those are just there. No, can we just? I need to eat. Let's. Can Look, we that get place out of is, here? Wait, that place hold on. Does things. The biggest travesty of the whole thing. <sighs> My outfit's ruined. I swear to God, if you say one more thing about your outfit. It's, what? It is ruined. It ruined for you. Fuck you, man. All of this, we, all of this happened to us for you. You could have avoided all of this if I you just sent a text message. You assumed you. I was in trouble. Yeah, You're well, welcome. you didn't answer our texts for weeks. Not weeks. Weeks, days. Weeks, weeks for our time. Give me credit. <laughs> uh, it's yeah. been a while for her. Like Look, days for like weeks. It's, if for okay. all of us. Yeah. What was all of that about? Like us being on the same page and like going in as a team and everything. Well, and mean, then it turns out you're the worst. This is real far from a team. Yeah. I didn't say I was exempt from what I was saying. Well, you, I have stuff to work on too, as they say. Look, if you're not all planning to turn me in immediately, it looks like we can go about our We're business. We're not gonna turn you in. As far as I can tell, Abram's new, so. <laughs> I mean, well, he knows. I mean, the crime's diablery, not feeding, so. Just, Jasper, do us a favor. Uh-huh, what? Next time you decide to disappear and you see the chat going on, can you just give us a something? So we don't have to come look for you. Hold on a second. He you said could... you have power that you don't deserve. What was that about when you were getting all sassy? I was really trying to forget that. No, this is relevant. What were you talking about? Was it ever weird to you that she can do all these rituals that usually only one certain clan gets to do? I thought that was just a vampire thing. I mean, a lady has her secrets. I mean, things can be learned, and I... Slit and activate corrosive vitae. So, what do you use? Your knife to slit your yeah. skin? Just a little bit. Ah. The vitae begins to well out of the wound and drip slowly onto the concrete outside his haven. And where it hits, where it spatters, it hisses. And the concrete begins to decay and dissolve. You're not the only one who learns things, but... You didn't teach me the blood acid she thing. She didn't teach me the blood acid thing either. I didn't know you had that. How'd you learn? I went through, I guess the best way to describe it is proper channels. I went directly to the source and asked for it. Wait, hold on a second. You just asked the Tremere to teach you a ritual and they just did it. No didn't mean I had attached. to pay for it. What's a Tremere? Remember Ava, the one that tested your blood? The one that said, wait, so do you guys know what the blood magic on her is? Ava won't return my calls, so I don't know. No. Mm -mm. I don't know what it is. It's too powerful. Is that unusual? Highly. Highly. It was a, I know it was a long time ago. Griffith Park, the woman, the blood, the cup. You remember yeah. that whole thing? I went thing? to Ava and asked for things. I had to give things in return. That's how it works. If you want to learn something another vampire can do that you don't know already, just ask. 
There's a price. Sometimes it's not worth it. But I have a particular need. Oh. Now, unfortunately, we all have secrets. And you all exposed mine. So I felt like I needed to have a tit for tat situation. Now, that's actually pretty understandable. Sir, the car will be here in just a few minutes. Are we all going to the College Sanctum? Yes, that is the closest, because Don's closer than I'd like, and I need to eat. I need you to gather some. I'll, I'll phone ahead. Sleep at the Sanctum. Would you mind bending it, that door hold, back into place? Hold on, excuse me. No, yeah. come with us. Come with us. Because I said I'll sleep in the sanctum. Yeah, but you. you disappearing and not answering. No, the, he, he said I'm he coming said to the with college us. with you. Oh, I thought. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's been, been a sorry. Long it's been it's night. been a night. I'm just I'm sorry. asking her to bend my door back into place. I'd like to. I won't say any more about your situation. You can say whatever else you want about the situation. Yeah. Just know, as a friendly warning, that there is an investigation. In, into what? In against what? me? Into how you came about those things that you do so freely. Well, you just <laughs> talk to like a blood witch or something, or or they come to talk to me. I mean, is Annabelle, you are able with um, considerable difficulty well, we to talk, bend I... the door back into some semblance of shape. You think it, it might fit back on its hinges. <laughs> Sort of. I mean... You know, try to put it in place? Yeah, it's, it's not perfect. It, it might not uh, keep out uh, anyone who's determined, but uh, certainly better than where Stryker left it. Uh, far as I can tell, though, we just cleared out your pantry, so what are you going to do now? I already fed. How are you going to... Feed tomorrow? I'll figure something out. I'm not as idealistic as to think that you'll have the same situation as Annabelle where everyone's just going to volunteer, but yes. Probably not. We'll think of something. But I'll figure something out. Don't worry. I've dealt with this before. This is... So that you only feed on our kind? Yeah. It's one way of going about doing it. I mean, we all like what we like. Mm-hmm. It's true. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, I'm... The car has arrived. Yeah. It's right this way. I limp into the front seat, holding myself together. He turns around, holsters the weapon, and leads the way to the vehicle, which is uh, one of your late model SUVs, <laughs> like the one you normally choose to use. This one has a different driver, a young man, that none of you have seen before at the wheel. Actually, uh, I say, when I get in, I'm like, get out, call an Uber. Eve, sir? drive, please. Yes, sir. Sure. He oh. does as he's told. Would you all mind for a second? I would like to speak to Annabelle privately. How about it? Eve gets behind the wheel, <laughs> checks everything to make sure it's all right. Are you going to make it, sir? Always. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I understand that this was a bit of a shock for you. I get that you were hoping I was different than everybody else and that I wasn't terrible. And I get that. But where, for whatever reason, you're on a very unique track to being the first unterrible kindred that has existed that I've ever heard about. So, I mean, I guess keep it up. Because <laughs> either you'll get killed or it'll work. And if it works, it's good for you. And if I get killed, at least I won't be a problem anymore, right? Yeah, I mean, that's, you know, we went either way. <laughs> now, I'd prefer it if you don't bring her up again in front of them. Oh. The less people who know and or remember her, the better. I want her to be safe, too. I don't want Chloe to be hurt. 
and I don't want her to be used against me or turned. I don't want this life for her. And that's may not be something that you've thought about, but killing's not necessarily the worst thing that could happen to your people. They might show up on your doorstep one day, the monster you're trying not to be. So just be careful. And keep doing what you're doing. Because most people don't get to. She probably misses you, you know? It's been a long time. I'm sure she's moved on. It doesn't work like that. I don't know how long it's been for you, but human hearts don't work like that. No. I know mine never did. I hope she doesn't. Let's go. We got. St we got to get out of. Otherwise, both of us are gonna be. Out. Oh. Okay. Yeah, I'm sorry too. Let's uh. Let's not get burned by the sun, huh? <laughs> okay. Yes. Yeah. And we'll get in the. I'll get in the car. Get into the SUV, along with the rest of the coterie. He puts it in gear and moves quickly away from this place and toward the college. It's not far away, not far at all. Maybe 10 or 15 minutes, and at this time of night, there's no traffic. So it's smooth driving. You reach your destination without any difficulty and you are able to reach the relative safety of the sanctum unseen, where there are places for you all to sleep very comfortably. Before I sleep, I do text Ramona, alive and unwell, <laughs> and then sleep. Text comes back, oh, that sucks. Great party over here. See you tomorrow. I don't reply. <laughs> Any other communications before you rest? I don't think I've ever slept here. I'm gonna shoot a text to Abrams, so we need to talk. What is the text? We need to talk? Mm hmm Privately. Text comes back very quickly. Soon. Uh, before you go to bed, Baron, you're supposed to call Abrams, remember? Mm, I do message, did you want that tonight, or, because I mean, I, I do text him, uh, uh, did you want to speak tonight or uh, it's sundown? The reply text is, it can wait. And so, the Coterie, uh, you are checking the playlist. The song is challenging. Wits and insight. Four. Four successes. She's safe. She misses you. She loves you. She's with Mark. sleep easy for the first time in many nights. So as the sun creeps into the sky, vampires rest. And the day fades behind you, and for many, many hours, you are senseless to the world. Los Angeles goes about its business. The people of the city have their lives. They walk in the sun, they order coffee, they laugh, they cry, they fall in love, they break up. In a city of this many million people, the number of individual stories of daily life are infinite. None of those apply to you now, because you're dead. And you sleep dead until the sun sinks below the horizon again. When that happens, your eyes open, 
like the blinds on a window rising. The night has fallen and your time has come once more. Everyone's damage to their superficial willpower is refreshed. <sighs> but you need to each make a rouse check for hunger. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what did you do? Four. <laughs> Four. Nelly. I'm good. You're good? Yeah. Uh, I'm at three. Three hunger. <laughs> I'm good. You know that you must eat. Eve has prepared for you. Anitra is waiting nearby. I'm probably gonna need two more, cause I gotta... I took the liberty of asking her to bring some friends, sir. Oh, okay, thank you. You excuse yourself to sate your thirst? Dude, uh, Annabelle, if you wanna ask, you're welcome to. Yeah. Okay. It's a long night. Right. Oh, God. Yeah. Fucking werewolves, man. Okay, <laughs> and then I, yeah. Mm -hmm. I always assumed you just had money in your stomach. You know what? You're about to have a Versace boot in your ass if you say one more word, okay? You know what? You know what? He needs to replace your outfit. Him. And then I go. I don't I have would any like, money. I would like to I, see what I, he picks out for you. I as much. You and Nick Annabelle. had money. <laughs> <laughs> you and Annabelle excuse yourselves to say to your hunger on the very willing. And I do sort of get a circuit of like heal a little, feed a little, heal a little, feed a little. Oh, I see. Try and I spread see. it out though now, so I don't hurt anybody. The question is, um, we think we know the answer, but we must ask. Do you kill? I do not. You remove three hunger dice. But you have just one. Annabelle, we assume that you do not kill either. All right, <laughs> remove two hunger dice and leave yourself with one. Anitra and her two friends are very willing. They're big, big fans of Victor Temple. I still and they are happy to give their consent to Victor's friend. When it's done, I still take it away from them, though. I wipe their memories, so they just think they partied with me. And one by one, you take the night, the uh, the moments away, mm -hmm. clouding their memories. Bring some drinks out and stuff, like, oh, no right. No memory of the feeding. Slow down, man. Ooh, it's crazy. So it leaves them with no memory of the of a few minutes of feeding, the actual feeding act. Yes, they can remember that they were partying with Victor Temple. That's yeah. cool to tell. It's the blood bits. <laughs> Those are the parts while, I don't want them to have. While they're away feeding. <laughs> Heal one aggravated damage. <laughs> I'm still it leaves you wounded, well. but it puts your guts back in your in your stomach. Yeah, I'm not doing too well. Okay. Let you it lets you heal over the wound at least, mm -hmm. so that it's no longer visible. While they're um, feeding away from us, mm. I assume they're in a, a different room. They are in a different part of the building. So. I'm gonna just make an assumption here. Okay. That you know exactly what it's like to do what I do. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and you drank the whole thing. Yeah. Yeah, thought so. Because you certainly know a lot of thaumaturgy. And you're not that much older than me. But I am older. You are. Hmm. You and I are very similar, Jasper. More than you think. I think less than you think. Really? <laughs> but that's fine. I mean, there's weirder things in the world than a Toreador with Tremere powers. Mm. So, let's hope we have uncharacteristically stupid Tremere in this city. Let's hope. But I'm not gonna lose sleep over it. Neither will I. <laughs> Victor, you have 
sated yourself. You have repaired some of the damage. You are feeling like the Baron. As you and Annabelle return to the Sanctum, your phone rings. Uh, on the way out, I do tell Anitra, I want to talk to you about something later. Have a proposal. Sure, it's your convenience. I didn't think you were that kind of guy. And then when I'm not there, the phone I'm like, Temple. Victor, my boy. Fiorenza, hello. If you wish to resolve the matter of Mr. Blaine, mm -hmm. you will be at the Succubus Club tonight at midnight, dressed appropriately. Your invitations have been arranged. Kindly present yourselves to Miss Ash upon your arrival and Victor, my boy. Mm -hmm. Dear, dear boy, don't make me regret this. Good evening. The line is dead. <laughs> I don't like when you laugh like that. <laughs> that was oddly sinister. That's the I've become a baron of somewhere else laugh. I got two words for you. Huh? Succubus Club. It's here? Tonight. It's here. Tonight. Are demons real too? Yes. Oh, 100%. Yes. Uh, so. Don't okay. write that in your book. No. Oh, by the way, remember that whole vampire's lie thing? I should have brought that up earlier. That's on here too. I know it is, but it was like the first thing on your list, so just remember that's we kind of could have. Excuse me. Oh, I'm just, I see. Uh, I'm trying to have a moment right now. Sorry. I'm sorry. I just because you know. So, Blaine. Wait, you said Succubus Club. It's all related. <sighs> I've made some calls. I called in some favors, and I've lured that bastard out, and he's going to be at the Succubus Club tonight. And I got us all invitations, but we have to go in now. And we need to change. We need to get to be beautiful up. I get to like show you off to the world. We have to leave now. Do you understand that? Is yeah. like there is not enough time to get ready I mean, like, now. I I thought you were so fast. I'm faster than you think. Yeah. So get ready. It's not just yeah. me. It's Wait. her too. Do you have so some, we no? Go it, home and we change. It, it, get back I here. I feel like we y'all have something brought here. Like 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 nice though. Now, and you, wait, put on something better than this. What's wrong with this? Everything's wrong with this. Have you seen yourself? It's why you hide in the shadows. You can't go to the Succubus Club like this. I am perfectly capable of going to the Succubus Club like this. What do you expect? They think I'm going to dress up fancy? Why is it called the Succubus Club? Put a tie on. I don't own a tie. Story. Actually, it's a great question to put, put in the book. Put a tie on. on. It's wear that. Do you keep ties in your pocket? Who keeps ties in their pocket? The same person that keeps shirts in their glove box, because this shit keeps happening. We don't have time to discuss this, but hold on. Okay, but all seriousness. All seriousness. Succubus Club. It is a giant vampire party. Mm-hmm. Anarchs and Camarilla kind of overlap. It's not exactly safe, but it's semi-neutral. Because there's some places where there's no violence. This is not one of those places. And no weapons allowed. Yeah, no weapons allowed. Okay. Yeah. Start <laughs> right. unloading. Yeah. My, Remove your my uh, pants yeah, full of We'll keep them the in the armory. car. We'll keep them in the car. Yeah. I mean, you might. You got to take off this. No, you can't wear this. Uh, it's run by a woman named Victoria Ash Toriador. Hmm, uh, I know. She's kind of a legend. And, oh, something very important. There will be people there, us, kindred, capable of things beyond your comprehension, like moving faster than it is possible to see, telling you to put the gun to your head and pull the trigger and you'll do it. So please. Tread lightly. Polite, yeah. There are monsters going to be there. Eve uh, steps forward and says that she has the location and the invitations received digitally from the mistress. She recommends that if you must all leave to change, it's best if you meet there. Did she include an invitation for you? I shall mind your vehicle. I mean, I don't need to go anywhere now that I have this fabulous tie. You're welcome. 
Also, it's you weren't so skinny. I would let you wear one of these, but I don't know. It's, I mean, not this. This one's ruined, but yeah. I mean, not well, that. I mean, that would probably be the one I would wear. And also, uh, later, I need to ask, why did you have the fucking cage in the living room and your Labradoodle hoodie behind the bookshelf? How does that even make any sense? Would the cage fit in the bookshelf? The, you could just have a smaller cage. Like, what is, what's even wrong I'm not with a, you, man? I'm not a monster. I, you know, I believe, you, I believe people. that my captives should have I, room you, to run around. Go get ready. Yeah, it's like, yeah so <laughs> we'll, we'll meet there. We'll meet there. We have yeah. to be there at midnight. I have so much to prepare for. It's the, ridiculous. Uh, Annabelle, do you have some, like, ni- like nice? Eh. No, I not stopped eh. in my track. There. Excuse me? Well. Eh. I'll be fine. We'll figure it out. There is a bonus for looking like this, and then people don't expect me to dress up. It's pretty great. Yeah, you can go invisible too. Though, yeah, so. no, I could be there and no one knows I'm there. Well, but before, Whatever. We'll figure it out. Before we go, and they absolutely will know you're there, all jokes aside, all excitement aside, because this is quite a big deal, remember what I told you about Blaine. He's stupid and he's strong. He's stronger than he should be. So while he's falling into our trap, we can't really expect him to go willingly, and he very well may not be alone. I was told he had six other members of his group. I've been making moves to take those pieces off the board, but... How many of those pieces are left, Victor? Well, we personally know two, Nick and Carla. Okay. So that leaves theoretically four more that I should have eyes on that should not be there, but we have to be ready. So, Coterie attends to its preparations for the Succubus Club. Well, we will take a break to let them do that. And be back shortly. Hello and welcome back to our Vampire the Masquerade Chronicle, LA by Night, Chapter 8. Who can you trust? The Succubus Club. The legendary traveling vampire party that goes from city to city, blows in, throws the night of the decade and then blows out again, leaving someone else to clean up the mess. Where is it? It's in Surfridge, a place that doesn't exist anymore. At the very western tip of the LAX airport, there is a no man's land. Once it was an upscale neighborhood, Palisades Del Rey. Tonight, it's an urban wasteland. Nothing left but stretches of broken streets and cement sidewalks and very, very few buildings, all acquired to make a buffer around the busy airport. There's no food out here for the undead, but it is a place where a vampire can be caught with her fangs out and nobody would know. It's quite isolated. And here, the Succubus Club has taken over a disused aircraft hangar that looms over the broken landscape like some sort of dark idol It's a smaller hangar built in the 50s during the early days of air travel. And as you arrive, the parking lot filled with automobiles of every description from Teslas to ancient Ford Fairlanes. The multicolored lights and the vibrant music pours out of the doors and windows, signaling that the party is already underway. Victor, Nelly, Jasper, Annabelle all meet up as planned while Eve remains with the vehicle. And Victoria Ash herself is at the door to greet guests. Standing next to her is a very short vampire who grins with his fangs. He's got crazy long arms and huge hands and he is clearly the security at the door. My, 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 don't you all look lovely. I see you wore every single jewel that you own <laughs> Actually, for this I event. Made them. That's great. Oh, my God. Oh, Annabelle, I said. What about any of our interactions gave you the idea that I would have anything appropriate to wear something called the Succubus Club? Did you steal stuff from my closet when you were in there? I did. Yeah, this you gave him all thing. this, this nonsense the about where... Yeah, oh my but, but I make it look good when I do it, though. Annabelle, oh. uh, in the car, there's a... I have something in the car. Go. It's fine. Go it's to the car. Fine. It's fine. Honey, honey, it's not fine. Go get changed. She's, it's okay. We, we have something. Yes. Yeah. She's just. But she's very young, Miss Ash. We don't mean to. We didn't mean to disrespect your establishment. Sorry. She's. Very new, new. at this. It's, 
Okay. Just as long as she comes back with something, at least from the mall. <laughs> Bruja, you know? They don't <sighs> they don't understand protocol. You, I'm not even, it's fine, whatever. I assume. Yeah, no problem. Put on a tie, no, what uh-huh, do you want? That's, I, I didn't need the it's extra. It's a nice tie. I kind of like it, Miss Ash. The uh, short security Thanks. head. What is your name, sir? Hey, you can call me Thing. Nice to meet you, Thing. And hey. nice to meet you, Miss Ash. The Victor Temple. Nice to meet you. It's a, nice to see you again, nice Miss Ash. Hi. Whoa! Jasper Harkwood, nice to meet you. Mm-hmm. All right, okay. You are gonna be a hit, young lady. She oh. always They're gonna is. love you. <laughs> Make sure you make sure you get to the platinum floor. But of course. Is your friend ready yet? Um, I'm sure she'll it's catch up. T- yeah, it's uh, take a moment for her. You know, I, I realize we just met, and I hate to intrude upon your kindness already. I mm-hmm. I, I, re- I don't want to. Don't bring... worry about. It. What can I do for you? Uh, is it all right if I bring a little extra something with me into the club? Hmm. Extra something. I might I, need it spelled out. I push my shirt back and I show the butt of the pistol. I'm like, I'll put it back if you ask, but I figured I'd check. A weapon. I'll let it slide. Just know that I expect certain things done tonight if I allow you in with that. I'll be the one that decides what those things are. I understand. Fine. Ah, Fiorenza sends her regards. Oh, nice, that's great. Mm, Fiorenza. Thing looks impressed. Clearly this is unusual. Okay. All right, well, Thing, where should we, uh, Send everybody. Give them some champagne, I guess. Except that, you know, can't really do anything with it. But it's not really anything. Fancy glasses. Right. Yeah. Uh, is there anything that we need to know? I mean. Don't fuck up. It's good advice. Mm-hmm. Again. It is. Especially That's- you. What do you mean, especially me? Especially what I just said. Why am I the one? Just let it sit there. How's the turnout going? I really it's like going really corridors. Good. Yeah, yeah. Sure yeah. Oh god, everybody. everybody, everybody that got an invitation. I mean, because oh. yeah, you know, I'm not gonna give them out to just anyone. Everybody showed up. You know, every mm-hmm. well. Mm-hmm. One mm-hmm. of your dear friends may have shown up, correct? Yeah, there is someone I'm looking for. I'll just check around. I'm pretty sure you'll find them here. Excellent. I would like a word. Mm-hmm. Uh, will you this would, way? After you, please. Yeah, I, uh, I think, uh, I think Miss Ash, you and uh, <clears throat> you and Miss G would uh, be happiest at the Platinum Floor. Um, Baron oh, Temple. Oh, yeah. I think maybe. Uh, <laughs> I think maybe um, maybe the Red Room. The Red Room. And uh, dude, I don't know. Yeah, don't worry about it. Maybe you come with me to the Red the Room. Bar. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. I'm right there with you. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. I feel like a lower I level, he might like have that my better. Lower level. Knife, mm-hmm. by the way, strapped to my back underneath my top. Hmm. If no one says anything, I won't say anything. Well, shit, I think I'm going to say something. I'm just kidding. <laughs> well, that's interesting that you should say so. So, you pass through the front doors into the interior of the club. The uh, metal detector hidden in the door frame buzzes mm-hmm. when Victor goes through, but... And I, oh, I see there's ash. a metal detector. Security. I'm like, yeah, it's, it's the. Let's little, him through. I see there's a metal detector, though. Mm-hmm. Okay, mm-hmm. then I'll be like, would you mind holding this for me? And I pull out the very large, <laughs> curved knife <laughs> that I have. Hey, yeah. I want that back when I leave. It's very important to me. Yeah, I can see that. Nice. Nice. Ooh, seen some action, happens? too. Yeah, we'll take good care of it for you. I asked nicely. We'll take good care of it for you. I should uh, mention Miss Ash's rules, right? Yeah. It's not just us. So go ahead and, you know, wet your whistles, but be discreet. Clean up after yourselves. Accidents, your problem, right? (laughs) Got it. Yeah. I don't mean to be rude, thing, or Miss Ash, but if it's not just us here and you're. Yeah. How's that work? What do you mean? Never mind. <laughs> and I just go on in. Thought so. <laughs> Guess I have to be invisible all night. Cool. Stay on my six. I'll cut a hole for you, buddy. 
The interior of the aircraft hangar has been transformed. No expense has been spared to turn this into a luxury modern dance club. There are at least four dance floors at various levels connected by catwalks raised up on pillars. Uh, each dance floor has its own musical differentiated taste. There are, some of them have DJs, some have live performers. Half the people on the dance floors look like they're too young for algebra class, and uh, a lot of them have faces that carry a lot more metal than you know, the Capone gang on a hit. The music, you can't tell where one song ends and the next takes off. It's a, it's a cacophony of noise and lights. Then there's all the smoke and the lasers. It makes everything very, very confusing. And the clothes, you see fashions that range from the absolutely alien and strange to the fabulously couture. And some of these kids, they dress like, I don't know, they're homeless on Mars or something. <laughs> some of the vampires are obvious. Weaving their way in and out of the crowd on the main floor and some of the dance floors, you spot some familiar faces. Uh, for example, Eva, Clan Tremere, is here. She isn't dancing. She's holding down one end of the bar, a glass of something conspicuously red in her hands. I Do I see any other people like me op in the open? Mm-hmm, several. Faces that you recognize, but maybe haven't talked to. Okay, then I don't use obfuscate. If they're in the open, then I can be in the open. And you're gonna be in the open as well. Nelly and Victor, you recognize Nines Rodriguez and his little last round gang on one of the dance floors. And Therese, Baron of Santa Monica herself, in severe black and looking like she'd rather be someplace else, anywhere else, is one of the upper lounges. Surrounded by sycophantic coterie. Is there anything that is like conspicuously, obviously a red room? Well, there is a raised stage that is painted crimson that is probably what you're looking for. Before I go, I text Annabelle, hurry up and find me in the red room. Hurry up and find me in the red room. I would like to go over to Eva. You're going to go over to Eva. And what about Nellie and Victoria? Oh, the platinum level sounds fantastic. Doesn't it, though? Yes, let's Absolutely. go there. Oh, gosh. Let's ditch platinum place, level right? is exactly as Miss Ash has ranged. It is staggeringly opulent. Even Miranda's club does not hold a candle to this. Everything is luxe and deluxe and extra luxe. If the materials were any more expensive, they would have their own zip code. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. This is amazing. Mm -hmm. Let's just hang out here the mm -hmm. whole night. The whole night. You are, you are instantly surrounded <laughs> by uh, a bevy of admirers, each willing to compete for the privilege of being in your company and dancing with you or doing whatever else may please you at this time. Bring me a young boy and a young girl of legal age. Two. Oh, yeah. It is mm -hmm. done in a trice. They are beautiful specimens, LA's best. Young, hopeful, eager to make their career in entertainment, and they are yours to do with as you please. I'm just having mine sit next to me for a while. I'm gonna snuggle up against mm -hmm. them. You're gonna purr? Oh, yes. Mm-hmm. So will they. Oh. So will they. Oh, it's a darling. Do you have any private rooms here? Oh, of course. <laughs> is my first rodeo. Yeah, there's all right there. Perfect. Take your pick. I will in a moment. Good. I'm still like purring up on. I'm trying to keep. Is there anything that I should be aware of that's going on? Well, it's a little difficult to distinguish, you know, individual people between the laser lights and the smoke and the sound. And you know that if you were to use your preternatural mm -hmm. senses here, you'd probably blind yourself. Yes. And uh, maybe deafen yourself, too. Okay. Well, I would actually um, like to talk to you about how are things going? What's going on? What's new? Well, how are things with the group? Oh, the group. The group's been uh, 
quite interesting and, and tasking, but um, last time I talked to you, I uh, just started my fashion uh, company, Thorn, mm-hmm. and we are starting all sorts of new lines, which is why I'm wearing every single jewel uh, that you see, because I made all of them. Oh, they're very pretty. I mean, how Thank many, you. do you need investors? Do you need anything? What can I get you? I would love an investor. Yeah. That'd be fantastic. Anything you want, I'm happy to help. Excellent, I see, but, Mm -hmm. so there's just one small thing that I'm really just curious about. What's in it for you? Oh, well, your success is my success. Is it? It is. Fascinating. Jasper, you're nearest the door, Mm -hmm. so you are the first to see Annabelle return. Ah. Jesus, about time. Of course, from the platinum room perch, you can see her enter. I mean, I'm not the one to ask, but you you look great. She looks fantastic. Thanks, Billy. Of course. Mr. Thing proves, passes you in. First person you know that you spot is Jasper in the downstairs bar area. And Victor, you've made your way to the red room. It's decorated not unlike what you imagine in uh, an old London cigar club might be decorated like. A lot of leather, a lot of metal, a lot of red. It speaks of power and authority in a postmodern, ventro appealing way. All the kindred up here are well dressed. Uh, None of them are dancing. They are sitting, they are talking, they are helping themselves to libations uh, from the willing, and they uh, smile toothily as you join their number. Do I see anyone I recognize? Here, no, but uh, a tall, well-dressed vampire who um, was probably middle-aged when he was embraced uh, wearing a resplendent midnight blue suit and a very expensive tie, introduces himself to you and uh, says, to me, he's Mr. DeVries. Great to see you here, Baron. Mr. DeVries, uh, nice to make your acquaintance. Does Good that name me. mean anything to me? Like, have I heard of a DeVries? No, not to your knowledge. Great to have you here. Join us. Can we get you something? Uh, no, I'm. I'm I'm, I'm, I'm looking to meet someone tonight. Ah, man of rarefied tastes. You know, it's, uh, I've been told that the Succubus Club is a uh, once per century experience and I wanna make sure that I take it all in. From your vantage point, you can see most of the club. The only thing you can't see very clearly is the platinum level where Nellie and Victoria are. You can sort of see it above you up in the, in the gods, as it were. When I look down, can I see Annabelle? Peering through the lasers and the smoke and the swaying, dancing bodies. Yeah, you can pick her out in your Jasper. I just say, uh, just one second, sir. I, I take my phone out and I just text A with two thumbs up. Is <laughs> 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 that the group chat? Yeah, let's do the group chat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, A. All the coterie receives that text. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, I say, uh, Mr. DuVries, uh, this is my first time at the Succubus Club. Is there anything that you particularly recommend I partake of? Uh, I recommend that you uh, you sample something fresh and uh, that you introduce yourselves yourself to um, my associates here. When he says introduce yourself, I activate awe. Okay. And I walk up and I'm like, ladies, gentlemen, Victor Temple. You have their attention. They are all well dressed. Some wear uh, club wear that they might have obtained on R- Rodeo Drive. Others look like they've prepared for Wasteland Weekend. Uh, some of them wear simple business wear, but all of them have made an effort, and that appears to be what counts: the effort that has been made. Do they all look fairly modern? Like, does anybody's clothes look like astonishingly vintage or anything of that nature? The only ones who are wearing anything um, not modern seem to be wearing it ironically. 
none of them seem to be affecting styles of earlier age. Same. Meanwhile, back on the platinum level, your dates are very, very happy people. Mm -hmm. Is there any alcohol around? I would say Is that the there, champagne, I think correct? you would you would probably have trouble avoiding it. Excellent. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna start like having my dates like drink pour their drinks and stuff like that and it is the toppest of the top shelf in oh, yes. bottle service. Oh yes. Nothing but nothing but crystal. Nothing but crystal. <laughs> What's their level of drunkness? How drunk do you want them to be? A good amount. They are there for your Not quite you're throwing up. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> They're there for your privilege and pleasure. So they will, they will, they will take what they are given. Uh -huh. Well, I think I'll take this opportunity to walk around and introduce myself a little bit more to your friends. Help yourself. I'll be back in five minutes. Fantastic. Great. Where do you want to go, Victoria? I want to go talk to you. To the red room. Mm-hmm. I'm mm -hmm. headed to the red room. Up to the red room. The uh, people in the club, kindred and kind of like heart like the ocean for you. Mm -hmm. They know the queen predator when she appears. Really like you this game. are given every <laughs> deference. Mm -hmm. The number of things that you were offered to imbibe, wrists, necks, glasses. Not right now. Innumerable. Um, I, do I see Victor? Yeah, it would be difficult not to spot him as mm -hmm. he's uh, enjoying the company of, uh, of uh, other kindred in the red room. They appear to be talking animatedly about business. Okay, well I am going to give my little bows and nods where I need to and wave away all the uh, body parts offered to me, but gently, you know, with some <laughs> flair, and then walk over to Victor, just kinda, so. Miss Ash. Victor, so good that you could come. Um, what exactly is it that you're looking for tonight? Uh, is there somewhere we could speak slightly more privately? Mm. Mm, of course. Instantly, two bodyguards appear, mm -hmm. clad in very dark suits. They offer to take you away. Again, it's reminiscent of Le Chat Noir, but at a level of opulence and decadence and efficiency and expense that is greater by orders of magnitude. I'm very impressed. The stories are absolutely true about the club and about you. Thank you very much. And you too and Miss Ash's company are offered wrists and necks and glasses of substances as you pass. Victor, don't partake when I'm on the don't job. Don't be shy, Victor. This isn't a job. This is a party. Please, at least one. Well, I, I have to take care of a little business and then when that's concluded, Victor, absolutely. I said at least one. I look at the people with the wrist extended, mm -hmm. and I'm like, do any of you know who I am? Uh, a young woman steps forward. Uh, she's wearing a, a very, very expensive couture dress um, that probably costs more than one of your SUVs. And uh, she's, I'm pretty sure you're Victor Temple. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, um, just a taste. Of course. I'm like, if, if you don't mind. She offers up both wrists. Yeah, I do. She knows what she's supposed to do. Oh, yeah, she does not mind. I do, yeah. I feed just a little. You help yourself? Yeah, just a little. Mm -hmm. Just a little bit? Mm-hmm. Fangs in like, flesh? Uh, yum, 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 yum. <laughs> yeah. The, uh, <laughs> scent of her expensive perfume wafts into your nostrils, mixing with the taste of her blood. It's a heady combination. The sanguinary pleasure is exquisite. Now... You are at only one hunger. Mm -hmm. So the only way to get rid of that dye would be to take all of her. I don't take her life. I'm doing it more just not to offend my host. Hmm. She then, enjoys the experience immensely and she is disappointed when it is over. Mm. I will not wipe her memory though. You will let her take the memory. Let her remember, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, I'm like, it, it's fine if she remembers. It's totally you know? fine. They all know exactly what they're supposed to do. Most impressive. Most well, impressive. You know, that is just a small taste of what I can do for you, Victor. Mm -hmm. So why are you hanging around all of these children of Ventru like you? Are we, do we, 
make it to a private place? You certainly have, uh, you have been led to uh, yet another level. It's like a small island raised above all the others connected with a catwalk. And here, uh, there's a couch where the two of you can sit and look out over the entire club from a very great height, the very top of the hangar. And down below, you see the mob on the dance floor reaching critical mass as wave after wave of sound washes over them. I have come to realize, it's true, yes, not a drop. (laughs) I've come to realize that no one can do it on their own, Miss Ash. Mm -hmm. And through the years, they've proven their loyalty to me and me to them, in as much as any of us are loyal to anything, I suppose. Mm -hmm. And so what are your goals with them? Well, as you might know, I'm Baron of the Valley now. Mm-hmm. That is uh, quite a title. That's undisputed, <laughs> Baron mm-hmm. of the Valley, might I add. Uh, Nelly, um, you know Nelly. We mm-hmm. know what Nelly wants. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jasper, believe it or not, I think really just wants to be left alone. And Annabelle wants to heal the world, and it's actually kind of adorable. That's very yeah. odd. It is. To be quite is, honest. She's very young. Oh, okay. But she means well. Okay. And that girl is strong. Really? Yes. Okay. I'm sure you noticed. You haven't made it this far in the world without... Oh, there's a reason why you are here. Mm. All of you. Mm. I feel like there's more than one. So, mm-hmm. uh, again, I would never dream of offending a lady, but, you know, time is money. So what can I do for you, Victoria Ash? You who seem to clearly have so much. Mm-hmm. And yet you've extended your hospitality for something. Well... Funny you should bring that up. Mm. There is a certain individual that I have my eye on Mm -hmm. that needs some taken care of. Right. Uh, So I would like you to do that. Mm -hmm. Um, Do you want a permanent solution to your problem? Uh, I... One might say that, yes. Um, I don't know if it would be me necessarily. Let's get that straight. But sure. Yeah. However Someone. you see fit. Otherwise, Let's yes. Let's put it uh, that. Who is it that you would like me to have a word with? Am I allowed to say? I believe that Miss Ash is allowed to say whatever she pleases. All right. Well, shit. Then yes. His name, as soon as I look it up, is... Oh, shoot. So many people deserving so many of revenge. People. <laughs> Wait, let me check the guest list. Hold on. <laughs> Give your, me a uh, second. Your security... Uh, Guard who has escorted you here offers the shorthand list to you and identifies Mr. Blaine's name for you. Oh, there it is. Blaine. Blaine the Pain. Mm. <laughs> I'm a big Dark Tower fan. So anyway, yes, I need Blaine taken care of. <laughs> Dark Tower? I thought it was the Ivory Tower. The, no. The, no. You just hear Stephen it, King. Uh, from across the club. Oh. Jesus. Yeah. I don't have a lot of time to read these Listen, days. you're a vampire, Lord. but you know how to read. Yeah, but I, with music and business, it's, I'm busy trying. I was kind of taking over the valley, Ash. I'm, I'm sorry. That uh, is literally no excuse. You know, as soon as this mess is finished, I'll read it and I'll let you know what you I know think. You know what? I, right now, could you please uh, put <laughs> the entire Dark Tower series in my friend's car here? Uh, right away. I'll alert my driver that it's coming. Good, thank you. Thank you. Then, um, then we're going to have a book club, and you can tell me all about it. Is Blaine here by chance? I know he's supposed to be here, but is he here yet? <laughs> um, excuse me, is Blaine here yet? Has he shown up to the party? We will find out right away, Miss Ash. Meanwhile, at the bar, you are joined by Eva, uh. the witch, from Griffith Park. She is wearing white again. <laughs> it's uh, reminiscent of something um, Grecian, mm. long and uh, A-line, high-waisted. Hello. She has a champagne flute full of very dark, conspicuously thick red liquid that she keeps dipping her finger into and <laughs> tasting. So nice to see you both again. Isn't this fabulous? Hello, Eva. Nice to see you again. You remember Annabelle? I do. How are you? Good. Weird. Good. Why weird? She's It's mm, been not, yeah. a couple of three weeks. Mm-hmm. And this is the first time she's been to something like this. Oh. 
Isn't it incredible? Are there really succubi here? Well, I've heard, <laughs> but I haven't met one yet. This mm -hmm. is the kind of party where kindred all get together and like to pretend we're not awful. And they like to pretend that being a vampire is all about being fancy and spending money and being popular and all the things that people like. I mean, humans do that too. I know, but humans as a general rule don't eat each other. It's absolutely fascinating, isn't it? I mean, one hears about the Succubus Club, but yeah, I never, never thought been. we'd get a chance to go. You do know that some kindred refer to the Toreador clan as the Succubi. Oh. I didn't know that. I didn't. I had heard that the Setites were sexier than the Toreador. Ooh, the Ministry. <laughs> mm. I don't think I would repeat that within hearing of our hostess. Probably not. It must just have been a miscommunication. Yeah, you know. You hear all kinds of things. One does hear all kinds of things. Well, speaking of, of which, mm -hmm. you mentioned something about blood magic. I frequently do. With me, on me. Does that mean that I have magic or that magic has been done on me? Not too many nights ago, you gave me your blood and I told you where you came from. I also told you that I saw magic on you. What does that mean? It means that someone had used blood sorcery to cast a spell. And the residue was still clinging to you. Do you know who it was? Of course I know who it was. It was me, Annabelle. I beg your pardon? Mm-hmm. I put it on you. Why, why would you do that? You've been told about favors, right? Yeah, yeah they're a big deal. They are a big deal, and sometimes they're inconvenient, but one must repay one's boons and clear one's debts. Your sire, Mr. Carver once did me a great service. And in repayment, on the night he brought you across, I protected you. I put words around you so that you could not be harmed. Unfortunately, you left him before anyone could explain. So, Imagine how happy I was to see you again. He's... I don't know what to think about him. I can understand that. Mr. Carver is um, unusual, to say the least. <laughs> he has considerable influence among the Anarchs of many different cities. He is well-traveled, and he has connections. I do not believe, however, he is on Miss Ash's guest list. Do you see him regularly? I try not to. Every time I do, I seem to get into debt again. Right. But I do know how to contact him if that is something you would wish. Yeah. Yeah, I have some questions. I've no doubt that you do. Well, I'll make that happen. I hope you're enjoying yourselves. Oh, yes. Are you hungry? There's so much to enjoy. No, I'm fine. fine. I deliberately arrived famished. <laughs> It's, it's almost a smorgasbord. Uh, and the it. entertainments, have you, have you seen the dancers 
at the far end. It's, it's incredible. I, I don't know where she found them, but it's, it's the most amazing movement I've ever seen. I have been perusing the area. Meanwhile, the platinum level, their blood is laced with champagne. Excellent, I am sitting on their lap and kissing them. Mm-hmm. And every once in a while nipping inside their mouth so that there's a little bit of trickles of blood Gathered in there. a little circlet of admirers, men and women and kindred who are there to watch the show. Awesome. And we do that and like move over to the next one and like kiss the other one and like just make my way around the circle. All around the oh, circle. Oh yes, I am the center of attention. I sparkle for a reason. <sighs> all sparkle all the time. Mm-hmm. They love it. Oh yeah. They're entranced by it. Excellent. They are completely enthralled. Excellent. They are unaware of the world around them. And the DJ, the DJ helps. He speeds up the rhythm and then notches it down and then pumps it back up again taking the crowd right to the edge and back, almost in time with the kissing and the biting mm-hmm. and the blood. All right, all right, enough, enough. I need to go find my friends. I will be right back. I'll make my way out, yep. Down and out? Yeah. Looking for kindred that you know? Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Well, you know where they are at the bar mm-hmm. with Eva the Witch. Right, I'm gonna shoot a text to Annabelle, looking good. Looking good. Mm. Nines has uh, left his, uh, his position by the wall and has actually got out onto the dance floor. Still with his coterie of downtown thugs. You don't see Therese and her group anywhere. Well, I'm gonna make my way to Nines then. Mm-hmm. Making your way across through the dance, through or around the dance floor? I am sauntering through the dance through floor. Through the dance floor. Letting people offer you things. Absolutely. Do you take, yes. <laughs> all the way through. No oh problem. yeah. Back in the private level, up in the gods. There's just one question I have. Mm-hmm. The ivory tower is pulling back from the world, pulling back from this. How long are they gonna let this go on? As long as they see fit. And when they tell you to stop? That's for me to know, and not for you to know. Well, my part of the world is small, but it is fairly stable. You're always welcome in the valley, Victoria. I appreciate that <laughs> offer, um, but I am pretty solid here. Uh, I have a question for you, actually. So, how is uh, Fiorenza doing? Uh, you know her. Uh, she doesn't usually talk about it, but uh, even though we were kind of separated in life, we mm-hmm. kind of both became Venture around the same time. We kind of came up through the ranks together, and we've just stayed friends, that's all. Oh, well, that's nice. Yeah. Anything new going on with her? I think we both know she wouldn't want me to talk about what's new with her. Oh, well, I'm not asking for secrets. I just mean in general. Anything fun, exciting? Same as every night, trying to mm-hmm. take over the world. Yes, aren't she, we all? She's helped me with some staffing issues I was having, though. She's 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 put some very nice people in my employ. Very solid. Staffing issues? Mm-hmm. You mean the group you're traveling with tonight? Uh, no. I came about them through completely different ah, means. Okay. What yes. staffing issues? Are there, the security guards still there? They have withdrawn to the very edge of the stairway, so to give you a very discreet and polite distance. I just motion. It's hard to find good help these days. People that'll cover your back. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. Speaking of covering your back, mm. the conversation we were having earlier about Blaine, mm. I was just wondering maybe what the connection was between him and Fiorenza, because it seems a little odd that he's showing up here per my invitation in regards to her. Uh, may I show you something? Of course. It's, um, and then I, I, I look at the guards and I just like push the, the shirt back. So I'm like, it instantly put their hands on their weapons. Mm-hmm. And then it's they fine. stand down and watch very carefully. They get super I nervous. I pull out the gun and I just turn it over. Mm-hmm. I'm like, Dude, by chance, does a lady know anything about firearms? Mm-hmm. Mid range. 
Even though that you are, uh, you're not an expert, it's clear that this is an unusual weapon and you haven't seen it before. It's a big, ugly pistol, rather mm -hmm. unattractive really, could do with some, some decoration and some, uh, some maybe some better uh, workmanship to make it more aesthetically appealing. But um, it's not like any other weapon you've seen. You've seen a few. To be blunt, Blaine's collaborating with the humans. He's feeding information to the Inquisition. This is a hunter weapon that I procured because of him. Uh -huh. And then I put it back away. So the whatever. security guards relax a little bit, but yeah. they, they do not take your eye, mm. their eyes off you anymore. Yeah, <laughs> hands up. I'm like, uh, Blaine's a threat to all of us. And that is why he must be removed. And that is why so many different ones of us find our interests aligned in removing that particular piece from the board. Understood. Okay, well, that definitely puts things in a new light. With that being said, A, thank you for telling me, and B, you can do with him how, whatever you want and however you see fit. Uh, when he comes, if, if we have a chance to take him in here, do we have your permission, or is there a place where perhaps you would prefer indiscreet things be taken care of. Personally, I would love to make an example of him, but I realize there's a lot of witnesses. So. You know what, though? If he's against all of us, then as far as I'm concerned, he can be tonight's entertainment. Go ahead and have at it. I do need you to know something, though, and I will not occupy any more of your time. The stories are true. The humans know. Make sure everyone knows the Inquisition is real. Well, fuck Victor. Mm, now you understand. That's what it is to fear. Make inside. a very, very, very good example of him tonight. Just let me know when he arrives, ma'am. Have one of your group keep an eye on the doors. My people are not supposed to talk, but I want no leaks outside of us in regards to that. I understand. I pull out the group. The I text the group. I'm like, we're clear to take Blaine down. Don't do it on group chat, Victor. I didn't tell you what I said. <laughs> I'm like, would you like to be added to the group chat, Victoria Ash? Yes, could you please add me to the group chat, A Victor? lot of out of context God. messages, yes. Annabelle? And Taika Waititi <laughs> from What We Do in the Shadows. <laughs> okay, I see where you're going with that. Uh, I think I understand the game you're playing. Come on, you're like a couple of years dead. You must have played this. I'm not really... Well, go on. Okay, so you're saying I have to choose what I do to either Gary yeah, Oldman, yeah, 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 and say, yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna say... I'm gonna do Gary Oldman. Oh, Jesus, that's what we're doing. I'm going to <laughs> kill Kate Beckinsale, and I'm going to marry Taika Waititi because he's funny. Okay, the only one that you got right was Taika Waititi. This is an opinion. How did I get it shadows. wrong? It's just wrong, Ava. I can be of no assistance to you in this matter. And how do you not marry Gary Oldman? In Dracula, though. Because he's dead. He's got. <laughs> I think I'll. The hat and the suit and the. I think I'll let you play your game. You might want to. Um, Pay a call on the hostess, Miss Ash. It's only polite to thank your hostess for the party, and I would do that sooner rather than later, lest she think you are rude. Oh. I think you'll find her at the highest level. Thank you. Why are you playing this? Game? Excuse me. I mean, why Can you imagine wouldn't Kate Beckinsale you... and I together? It's, it'd be just dreary all the time. But in under the leather corset, I just. There's enough leather in my life. <laughs> Yeah. Oh my God, you guys, get a room. <laughs> I mean, all right. You saw, you saw my house. Yeah. You can see them from where you are. You can see everyone from where you are. Oh, okay. It's We're out of the very, very clear area. that they are having a, a very animated discussion. All right. Let's go find the rest of them. I I do lean over to you and I and I just say before I go, I'm like. Um, I want to respect your house, but I'd ask that you respect our coterie. They're solid. They've I'll never let me down. I want to respect Victor. Don't tell me who to respect. Prove it first. That's how you get my respect. They've never let me down. 
well, they haven't proven themselves to me yet, so we'll see. We I actually I stay them. up there, but I'm just trying to see if I can put eyes on Bobby. Uh, we, well, I, you are making your way upstairs. Mm-hmm. On your way, as you uh, as you cut across the uh, the dance floor that is still building towards critical mass, you uh, come across Nellie, who is enjoying her sauntering and sashaying through the crowd, enjoying what's offered to her. It's hard to miss her with that crown. <sighs> Oh, hi, darling. I feel like a fancy Gomez Adams. Well, it's a step in the right direction, at least. Mm. And the, oh, oh, you, you wore it. Yeah, this looks exactly like something a Toreador would give to a Bruja. It's like the Punisher meets Ed Hardy. <laughs> well, I'm glad you like it. It's a prototype from my new jewelry line. So. Mm. And also probably a pretty valuable weapon if you just throw it at somebody. Yeah, man. It could really take someone out. Well, but seriously, thanks. You're no. welcome. You look fabulous in it. We really should have you model for me at some point. Oh, no. Thanks. I'm, I'm so good. Thank you. Having fun? Thank you. Ah. Uh, yeah, I was yeah. fast. Oh, I didn't uh, realize you were right there. Oh, the bow tie. It's charming. I'm sure it is. Are you having fun, Jasper? Oh, it's great. I love it here. Excellent. Have you guys ran into anyone that you knew? Yes. Any good information? No. Oh. I just knew people. So you know Therese's here? Yeah. I don't know Therese. I mean, I know of Therese. I don't know Therese. It's a good time to go meet her acquaintance if you like. I'm actually going to go talk to Nines right now if you'd like to join me. Oh, I, I should go say hello to the hostess, apparently. I'm not sorry. No, you oh. haven't done that yet. Annabelle. Sorry, Mom. First thing. <laughs> always greet the host. Pay her a compliment. Okay. And if you need help, she has a fabulous necklace on. Great. Cool. Well, I'm going to go. Please continue your social climb. I will. Thank you. I keep walking. <laughs> You know, back when I was alive, yeah. my girlfriend and, you know, my boyfriend and I, we, like, used to joke about this term, you ever eat the rich? Yeah. That's actually possible now. Yeah, it is. You can, you can do that. Eat anybody with any amount of money. But please, go, don't, they know what you are here, by the way, so don't worry about that problem. Your thing. You okay? Yeah, I'm fine. This is not the place I'm supposed to be. I'm fine. Okay. All right, stay in touch. This isn't the first time this has happened. I'm gonna go... Uh, can I do something bit. really funny? <laughs> I suspect you probably can. Yes. Can I, I can see them? You absolutely can. So I can see, see that they're talking and having a deep conversation. Mm-hmm. Can I hear or do I get any kind of gist of Jasper's attitude about being here? Well, it's too loud and, and cacophonic, but body language, you are a past master at reading body cues, even from those who are skilled at hitting them. So let's find out. Yeah, okay. Mm-hmm. Jasper, how do you feel about being here? Really? I, this place makes me uncomfortable, but I know I'm supposed to be here. He's here reluctantly. Can I, um, can I celerity over to him before he has a chance to walk away and then with my presence, make him have a wonderful time at this party and can't get enough of me? Won't that be interesting? Majesty of Jasper. (laughs) Moving faster than most eyes can follow, Uh, you leave your perch at the top of the club Mm -hmm. and make your way to the very ground floor. And in a moment, Victoria Ash is standing right in front of you. Oh! (laughs) I want to put an arm around Jasper and say, I hope you're having a wonderful time. I am so thrilled that you were able to join us tonight. 
Jasper. Yes. I need you to roll some dice. <laughs> <laughs> now. What do you need me to roll? Let me just check your character sheet. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's going to be, uh, hmm. Going to be resolve and composure together. Oh, cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I will roll for Miss Ash. You. <laughs> <laughs> That's two successes. Two successes. No, uh, no messy critical. Nope, just two regular successes. Uh, I almost hate to be the one to tell you this, but, but it dawns on you suddenly, <laughs> revelatorily, yes, that Victoria Ash is the most appealing, friendly beautiful and desirable vampire you have oh, yeah. ever met. You don't know why you didn't see it before. I've, I've been a fool. You must have had <laughs> <laughs> You want, you feel as though you are, pardon the pun, kindred spirits mm -hmm. who should have been friends long ago and you're eager to rectify that problem. Every word she says is fascinating. You know, I... I feel uh, terrible about never saying this before, but I, I can't tell you how much it means to me that you invited me here tonight. This is, I've, I've always wanted to come to the Succubus Club, and this was a big kind of dream come true for me, and I really want to thank you for that. Oh, Jasper, you are so welcome. You know what would bring my heart so much joy? What? Is to see you dance on that dance floor. You know, I think, that's, that sounds like a great idea. I really, I really, you know. Do you know how to moonwalk? You know, I could give it a try. I've never really tried it before, but I, I you I know, I've seen people do it, and I think, I think I could do it. Yes, I was a huge Michael Jackson fan back in the day. You know, for you, you know, I... before all the questionable stuff. Right, so right, I would course, love to see that dance. You know, if for you, I would, I would love to give it a shot. Fantastic. Thank you. I'll stand here watch. Okay, so I head out into the middle of the dance floor. Yeah. Yes. And I'm gonna give it a shot. Well. <laughs> What do I, what do you, what do I, what do I, Your pool is going to be four dice. It's your dexterity only. Okay. You have no performance to speak of. I do not. Oh. <laughs> Come on, Missy Critical. <laughs> <laughs> One success. One success. Yeah, okay. Well, you've got music. You've got a mob that's been out on the floor for a few hours now. You've yep. got music that's been pounding longer than that with no break between songs. No songs, really, at all. Just one sound sort of bleeding into the next. Right. And with one success, you can sort of manage a, a kind of a rhythmic shuffle. I do my best. Yeah. You're it's, doing uh, it, Jasper! You're doing it! I couldn't smile back and continue on with what I was doing. It could be called dancing if one were very charitable. You know, I, mm -hmm. I can be charitable sometimes. Nellie, you have never seen anything like this. <laughs> you hope you never see it again. <laughs> oh, goodness. Mm -hmm. I just look at it and I'm like. <laughs> uh, uh, well, 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 pl well played. Thank you. One of your security minions is at your elbow, Miss Ash. Mm -hmm. And he says that that individual that you wanted taken care of has arrived. Good to know. How far is Victor by me at all? He is, and uh, I believe that the coterie is now sort of all gathered together mm -hmm. around you, except for Jasper. I definitely would have come mm -hmm. when I saw him dance. Shuffling. I would yeah. have come yeah. from the stage. Pretty sure that you've all found your way to each other by now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Look, is he moonwalking? <laughs> oh, try. Your moves are to die for. You look fantastic. Also, Victor, that little business we talked about. Mm -hmm. It's time. Excellent. And good job cleaning up. Oh, uh, thank you so much for the, the invitation to your party, Miss Ash. I apologize for my lack of proper attire earlier. There's clearly still a lot I have left to learn. Okay, good. I'm, I'm tired. Of, thank you. Good, thank God. Thank you. Yes, that's <gasps> fine. Enough. That's oh, fine. Thank I really you. appreciate uh, you let, telling me to dance. Oh, oh sweetheart, whatever you want. You, is there anything else I can do for you? You know, no, I'm good. I'm just, you know, if, as long as you're, ha you're happy and, you know, we're getting along, I'm great. Yeah. Why don't you come next to me? Okay. No, I right. come over off the dance could floor. You, uh, could you direct me towards the person in question? 
Uh, yeah, somewhere out there. <laughs> mm. uh, uh, I would be happy to take care of it, Miss Ash, if you like. I'll, I'll direct you. Yes, I have some other guests that I need to attend to. Go ahead Absolutely. and follow. Yes. Um, I head off with her. You go to Miss Ash's side. Mm -hmm. Victor, do you need him? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Okay, can you go with your friend? Oh, are you sure? Yeah, it's okay. You okay. can come back. Well, I hope to see you again soon. Thank you. If you guys make a mess or anything, though, would you please clean up for me? Oh, of course. You I know. pull out my phone and I take a picture of his puppy dog face. Just, <laughs> I'm like, I'm gonna need that later. Do you? Yeah, I'm gonna need that later. I will make a note. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Three uh, Ps in puppy, right? Yes. <laughs> Uh, actually, I asked the security guy to kind of take us around the floor because I want to be between Blaine and the door so mm -hmm. that if he makes me, he can't just immediately bolt. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is um. there a... Is there a platform or something up high besides... I know that there's a platinum room, but somewhere where I can see down over everything? Absolutely. There's a spot at the very top of the club where all the catwalks converge. And there is a platform that uh, has been set aside for your exclusive use, where you can see everything. I want to take a seat there, and I'm going to keep my eyes on the distance as you guys close in. Mm. Because I want this as an example, so I'm going to call some shit. So. There's, certainly, uh, there's certainly no problem seeing from up here. Mm -hmm. And when you wish, of course, you can be heard. You can command the music to be stopped. You can make sure security goes where it's supposed to. You could shut the whole place down if you needed to. You have total control from this vantage point. What I would like to do is get on the mic, mm. which I'm assuming is there in my hands. It's there or when I'm you need it. Or I'm just loud, which is also true. <laughs> the microphone is there when you need it. Okay, I'm going to shut down the music. Everyone, please, can I have your attention? Yeah. Hundreds and hundreds of faces all look up adoringly at you. I have Some of the kindred maybe a little less adoringly than the mortals. And they can fuck off. You note their faces for later. Yeah. I have a special event for our entertainment tonight, and I would like to snap my fingers and a spotlight go right to um, Blaine. Mr. Blaine. Your first chance of seeing him in the undead flesh. He is not as scary looking as you might have been led to believe, but he is large and he has a face that looks like it might have been carved out of granite. It's all planes and angles. His nose was broken at some point during his mortal lifetime. He's got the build of a prize fighter. It's got one of those strange stares that doesn't seem to really register anything up close. He always seems to be looking out into the distance. His hair has been cut very, very short. And on either side, shaved away, not unlike Annabelle's. His suit is barely constrained by the muscular build of his body. He looks like he can take a punch and throw one as well. He blinks against the light that's shining down on him. And all the mob on the dance floor begins to pull away, like the mob at an arena. <laughs> hey, what's a big idea? Uh, since he's in the spotlight and we're in the, I guess he can't see us, right? He can't see much with the light shining directly into his eyes. When the people start to part, I do, like, when I'm like, and I'm like, hey, don't I know you? You're Tommy! Tommy T! Hey, what's up, Tommy? You know, I thought he looked familiar. It's Tommy T, right? That's yeah. the guy, right, yeah. Tommy so you T. Are, you are approaching him close enough for him to hear you? Yes. Nellie, what are you doing? I am going to come, like, directly at him. I'm going to activate awe, though. Mm -hmm. So, I... Yes. So you have awe, mm -hmm. uh, which will, of course, add dice to your, your presence mm -hmm. uh, pools if you want to use it. Well, I'm just going to keep my eyes on How close do you want to get? Not terribly close not at Not terribly all. close? Mm -mm. Yeah, not with um, give, me a, give me a hand. Um, so pool of light, I'm going to be like right at the edge of that. Right at the edge of the spotlight. Yeah. yeah. It's a very un unfamiliar place for you. I know. Mm -hmm. Annabelle, what's your move? I stick close to that one. I activate awe 
and potence goes up. You make a rouse check. How'd you do? I failed. I failed. Hunger increases. Your hunger increases to two, and the beast whispers in your ear. I bet his blood's good. You saw what Jasper did. You could do it too. You could take him. You could drink him down. His strength could be yours. Do it. Do it now. Shake him. Take him. Shut up. On. You shut up. You, you shut up. <laughs> I'm about 20 feet o- away, so I'm like out so at the edge of the, on the on the other side of the light. I'm just yelling at him. I'm like, eh. Tommy, I thought you were working for that dumb bastard Blaine. Like, what are you even doing here, man? Ah, shit. Yeah. Like, fuck that guy. Like, come on, man. Like, what are you doing here? He goes for his gun. Any reactions? I'm just going to keep walking straight towards him, being like, you know, I really heard that... Bl- Blaine what? Blaine? Bl- yeah. That was yeah. Blaine, right. Blaine, yeah, yeah. yeah. That, um, that Blaine was really just a kind of a shit guy to work for, and, <laughs> and I'm just walking guy. straight at him and not mm-hmm. stopping. I'm maneuvering behind him. I'm dropping my weapon and kind of moving like... You two are yeah. circling. You're approaching yeah. him. You're circling. Mm-hmm. Talking trash the standing at the time, edge <laughs> of the light. Annabelle? Yeah. I'm standing there, just ready to pass. Ready to go? He steps several paces to his left, both to keep some distance between himself and Jasper and to make sure that you don't get squarely behind him and to get out of the blinding light. Mm -hmm. Uh, His pistol is out. It is exactly like yours. Oh, wait. I think we have this wrong. Mm. And I'm I'm terribly embarrassed. Right. I think this is Blaine. This fucking guy is Blaine. This is Blaine. I mean, we were looking around. I thought we must have got the pictures. I mean, I thought Blaine was supposed to be like a serious guy, not this guy. but, But Blaine... I do have a question. Do you like? Why don't you fucking freak? <laughs> freak? Oh, um, <laughs> no! It's, it's nothing big. I just, I really wondered if you liked tricks, and I'm going to soaringly straight up in the air and come down both fists on the top of his head. <laughs> That's quite a maneuver. Yeah, that you is actually have three a chance meters of success. straight up, <laughs> up and then down like a pile driver and yeah. a knife. Annabelle, what are you doing? I. Watch and wait for him to land, and then I rush him. I'm gonna roll the power. <laughs> power on that. that is two successes. Two successes. Ha. Huh. Okay. Well, he's faster than he looks. He steps backwards, drops down to a knee. You land directly in front of him. Hi. But you don't. Strike home. As soon as he lands, I rush at him. You have going potence. to grab the gun. I have potions. Try to take the gun away. You want to arm him? Yes. Nelly. I'm gonna walk behind a couple of. Um, is there any like mortals or anything? <laughs> There's a lot of them, but they're all back. They have all backed away, and they've created a space of many yards across between what's happening in the spotlight. How close yeah. is my coterie? How you're, you jumped up in the air, correct? I'm standing right in front of Blaine. Okay. Mm-hmm. I am going to withhold. I'm, I, I have a couple of ideas, but I'm, I'm going to hold. I'm going to wait and see how things fall out. Yeah. Okay. Victor Temple. Um, I am going to activate Daunt. And I say, intimidate. Drop your gun and I, we might let you live. Need to beat four. Five. <laughs> One more. <laughs> we'll spend a re- willpower to re-roll three dice. Well, I'll spend a willpower to re-roll. I'll spend a willpower to re-roll three dice. Here we go. Six. Seven. Oh, yes. <laughs> so. <laughs> <laughs> the gun clatters to the floor. There's a visible gasp from the crowd as they see it's not a part of the performance. As the gun, it does the, it, is it near me? Yeah, it's very near you. I want to, and I just corrosive vitae all over the gun to melt ah, it. Ah, you cut yourself with your own knife. I don't have the knife, I just use my nail. Because own, own they have the door. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you drip Nosferatu blood all over the weapon. Oh, I'm sorry. Did, did, that, did that mean something hiss, to you? Hiss, spatter, hiss. Because it's... Some of the dance floor goes with it, but the gun is quickly rendered, you think, unusable, except for one problem. What? The ammunition is incendiary. Mm-hmm. 
and you're dripping acid on it. I am. This could be very interesting very quickly. Annabelle, as soon as you, I see it start you corroding, roll I roll in. So I roll in and I grab him by lapels and try to lift him. Mm. He's going to try to dodge, but he hasn't got many dice. He's scared of Victor. And he would have to split his Ooh. pool. So you want to grab him? Yes. Brawl and athletics. <laughs> and add your potence. Whatever it is, I prove. Brawl, brawl and athletics? Brawl and athletics. Uh, excuse me. Um, strength. Strength and brawl. And add your potence. Oh. Yeah. And blood. His, uh, his dodge sucks. Because he's a refrigerator. <laughs> Ooh. Mm, I'm going to burn a willpower. Mm-hmm. Uh, three. Three? What is your intent? Um, I am going to grab him and lift him up, since I assume he's bigger than me still. Um, Quite a bit larger than you. Up. But you... So that his feet are dangling above the ground. With your arms infused with undead strength, you can haul this huge bruja above you and hold him up. Don't move. And... That's when... I want to use... Rapid reflexes. Too quickly, the gun I've, I'm in process of melting, knowing it's an incendiary because he has one and I know what it does. I'm going to quickly grab it and stuff it in his pocket. You're going to put it in his pocket? Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. Like right in the, or not his back pocket, like right behind him. So if it goes. It goes <laughs> like, in his, like in his waistband? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Oh. <sighs> Brutal. <laughs> Nelly? Beast we are. Well, I was going to entrance him, but it seems like you guys are all having quite the fun time over here. Mm-hmm. You can scare him with entrancement. You can you can be like mean entrancing also. It does. It's not necessarily just love. Oh can, no, no, I know, but she's got him up in the air. So, okay, Victor. Uh, I actually am going to wait to see how how this plays out. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Annabelle. Uh, Miss Ash, I believe this is your party. What would you like done? Kill him. I'm just like, um, steaks, please, you guys. I just say that out loud. Whoever wants to listen can listen. Do it slowly. Oh, he's going to hear it. Okay. Um, is there a chair nearby? Uh, definitely. Uh, there's a, there's a, a bar stool. Okay. Better. I want to take the bar stool and I just want to slam it on the ground to break it, uh, the legs off of it. Snap it off. I'm going to grab two of them. And I walk behind him where I place the gun, and which obviously hasn't gone off yet. <laughs> He's and scared of Victor. He doesn't know Nelly's there. He's not scared of Annabelle. He doesn't see what you're doing. So he's going to struggle with Annabelle and try to, um, try to break her hold. Okay. I want to try and jam both these chair legs in his back. <laughs> Are you trying to stake him? Not like, you know, particularly. You know, he said trying to do slowly, damage. so I'm doing what she oh, says. So you're, so you're actually doing what the hostess is asked yeah. to do. All right. So uh, he's going to try to struggle against you, Annabelle. So um, strength and brawl against his. And he will be adding his potence as well. I need more dice. The crowd is absolutely silent. They didn't know that they came to see gladiatorial content. Oh, I'm not done yet. I got some. I have a lot of (laughs) say. Three, seven. (sighs) He snaps your hold, and you're lucky he doesn't snap your arms too. His arms come up. He breaks free. He shoves you and sends you backwards several paces. Mm. Jasper, that is. Five successes. Five successes. On jamming both these mm-hmm. stool legs into him. The broken edges of the wood stab in his back. He grunts in pain. Ah, oh, hey, what the fuck, man? She said slowly. Oh, shit, fuck you guys. <laughs> Nelly? At that moment, I'm going to activate entrancement. That's when you're going to try to catch his eye? Oh, yes. You already had awe. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Okay, so... You are trying to slow him down and make him pay attention to you. You can make him love of you or be afraid of you with entrancement. Charisma and presence. Do you want him to be afraid of how much he loves you? Yes. Just break his soul while we're at it, too. Let's do both. 
emotional pain lasts longer. Three successes? Ooh. No successes. Mm -hmm. Spending willpower to reroll. One success. I got three. You've got three? Mm -hmm. He, with the sticks still sticking out of his back, begins to crawl across the dance floor to you. I'm gonna meet him halfway. Are you anywhere near him? I'm walking behind him. I have one of the third chair leg of the stool ready, and I go, Miss Ash, as soon as you give the word, I'm gonna light this match. I'm gonna, I, I wanna see what you're doing. He's yeah. paying attention to Nellie, and he can't see anybody else. The sparkle from her crown is everything in the world to him. Oh, and he has head. reached your designer shoes. Oh, lovely. I'm going to come come down. I'm going to pet his head. I'm You're down to his level? I'm going to grab the sticks. I'm going to push it in and twist it. Ooh. You that like will that? break the entrancement. It's okay. It causes serious superficial damage as it, the jagged wood jams even further into his flesh. He bellows in pain and lashes out. I'm looking at, I look at, give the quick glance at Jasper and I'm going to like grab a reflex yeah, out of there. If you, get, you move. Okay. He send it. Mm -hmm. right, the minute you move. Remember how strong he is. And you Jasper? have, you have broken your own presence hold over him. Mm -hmm. She said my name, so I'm swinging down as soon as okay. I can. He shoves you, his uh, fists come up underneath your jaw and your head snaps back, your teeth click together, mm -hmm. you almost lose your crown. That's not cool. Take three points of superficial damage. Dare. Nelly. Yes, Jasper. Uh, I'm swinging down with the chair leg to smash the gun that's in the back of his pants. You're trying to to rupture the ammunition. De detonate the ammunition. <gasps> wow. All right, I'm will powering that. Mm -hmm. Just all, all right. blank. Oh. oh. <laughs> At least when the beast you'll fail. There we go, three successes. Three successes, okay. He can't dodge, he doesn't know you're back there and he can't see what you're doing. So he has no defense. The broken wooden leg smashes down into the handgun, which has already corroded the chamber partly open mm -hmm. because of the Fact, acid yeah. blood that you dripped all over it. There's a very satisfying crunch and then flame, fire. <laughs> Bursts out of his back, climbs up the stake. You need to check for Rot Shrek. Okay. All your willpower that hasn't been spent mm -hmm. against the fear of fire. I right. grab Jasper. And You're going to try to haul him. him out of there? Yes. He may still frenzy, though. Right. No blood for willpower. No blood. No just, blood for just, hey, your, I like just that. your unspent willpower. <laughs> mm. That is one success. One success is insufficient. All right. Mm -hmm. You have nearly burned your face off, and you are afraid. This is one of, the, one of the two banes of kindred that are the most deadly, the other, of course, being the sun itself. Right. Uh, and this was a little too close to comfort. So you pedal backwards yep. away from the fire. <laughs> Blaine begins to smoke and burn, and his screams are beautifully agonizing. When Annabelle, you grab Jasper. Thanks. Hold him steady. It's okay. <gasps> Victor? When I hear, when I see him on fire and screaming, I say, for crimes against the masquerade, for conspiring with the humans and the Inquisition, and for being a disgrace, I hereby sentence you to the final death. And I shoot him. You're gonna pull out your, you've got your own gun and you're mm -hmm. gonna shoot him. Mm -hmm. He's half burning already. Mm -hmm. you, don't need, you don't need to roll. You've got him point blank and yeah. he cannot dodge. So you're gonna execute him. Mm -hmm. The gun fires and that weird, strange, acrid smell of the incendiary ammunition fills the air. The round strikes him in the head. Fire erupts on the dance floor. All the vampires except for Miss Ash, who's safely above the blaze, need to check for fear. Do All I your unspent willpower, no, you're already in frenzy. <laughs> <laughs> All your unspent willpower oh, is your roll. Oh, five. Five. Crit. Four. Crit, critical success. How many? Four. Four? Four? There are a lot of shouts from alarmed kindred on the dance floor. 
Whoa, shit, fire! <laughs> the place is going up. Get the hell out. Party's over, man. I. Uh, oh, good. Yeah. Uh, well, is how many humans to vampire ratio is there? Oh, there's at least six or seven humans to every vampire. A good I supply. want all the humans wiped. Nobody's leaving here as a potential leak. You tell this to your head of security. So I'm standing up and I'm saying, that man was a traitor, and you can thank this group for it. Everyone needs to die. Well, except for vampires, of course. But, you know. <laughs> <laughs> We're like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And there was a fire fight. <laughs> not a single person, not a single person leaves here alive. And if they do, you will not be invited next year. The mortals don't like the sound of this. Tough shit for them. At all. Annabelle. Oh, never mind, I'm friendly. I say, yeah. I say, I say to the chaos the and after the moment of Nelly? her making her nuts. You need to flee. You need oh, to get yeah. it far away from the flame. I swallowed my spider. I'm Wouldn't like, my place be so nice that it would have... Like, you might have sprinkled yeah, fire sprinklers I, I in there? I think we'll get to that in a moment. Yeah, okay. Yeah, absolutely, you're I right. Like, I have we're not a lot of yet. money. <laughs> we're not there yet. It's temporary. It's absolutely true. <laughs> uh, but instead of, fire, instead of sprinklers, uh, your security guards muscle their way through the alarmed and uh, shouting mob with fire extinguishers and get to work putting out the flames of the now dead vampire. Well, uh, and, while, well, oh. well it's, still, it's still too chaotic. Mm -hmm. Essentially, there is little left of Bobby Blaine at this point, except a charred, smoking, and rapidly deteriorating corpse. While they're um, while they're extinguishing his corpse, I reactivate awe, and I say, uh, <laughs> <laughs> "It is, it is, it is going to be difficult to calm this mob." It's fine. They don't. I mean, if they're whoever hears me, hears me. I say, uh, "Understand that man was a traitor to all of us." And understand anyone that breaches the masquerade and risks all of our lives will meet the final death. Hmm. The baronial grandstanding is partially effective. The vampires and nines group, those who haven't succumbed to the red fear, nod reluctantly in understanding. Vampires in Teresa's coterie are eagerly carrying out Miss Ash's instructions. <laughs> and it becomes grotesque. It's I'm like still a sizzler. I'm still on a holiday. Fleeing, right? <laughs> you need to get some distance away, from, but the flames have now been extinguished. Okay. So with the flame threat removed. I'm gonna shake it off. Yeah. You can shake it off and come back to yourself. So that's I'm, what burning really? someone does. Running up the wall. <laughs> Like a spider. Oh, yeah, and I'm jumping over, like, the balcony to, like, join her and be like... <gasps> You're going to climb your way up oh, yeah. to the top oh. level of the catwalk. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I meant to oh, do that. <laughs> where it is relatively yeah. safe. Yeah. And where you can look down on the massacre that is unfolding. Hmm. Quite the party. Thank you. Yeah. Well, I you know. just... Can we safely assume that Annabelle does not participate? A fun time and a lot of work. <laughs> I've never burned anybody before. Oh. It was new. This is the first night for everything, right? Yeah. Don't. You okay? No, I'm fine. Fire bad and all that. Yeah. Fire bad. No touch. N Next time. Next time. There's nothing you can do about this, by the way. The vampire guests who are possessed of consciences that are untroubled by this instruction comply, some reluctantly, some eagerly, aided by the security staff, which has grown considerably in number. There's nothing The I barons, think. nines, and Therese slowly make their way over to you, and it is clear that they wish to have some discussion when the time is right. Mm -hmm. Baron? Baron? From your vantage point, Miss Ash, you can see your handiwork. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful in a way. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I think it's great. Oh, yes. You know, work and pleasure all rolled into one. I mean, this has been a successful evening. Good job, Victor and team. 
I just because I, I think I'm on the floor and you're up there. Yeah, we're up. Yeah. I just, All right, I, well, I'm yelling it. I just sort of salute <laughs> and I take my phone out again to the group chat. I'm like, we need to go. <laughs> <laughs> See how effective that is. Yeah. I, and I stand back. I'd really like to stay a little longer. Uh, um, I text. I'm with Miss Ash. I, I just look up and I'm like, and then I start trying to find a way up there. <laughs> it's pretty easy. Pick your way around the catwalks. Are you leaving Annabelle behind? I mean, I'm still under her thing, correct? Yeah. All right. Well, when he gets up, I'll just turn and be like, Jasper, excellent job. And anytime you want to come back and tell me anything that you might hear about that goes on out there, you will always have a welcome place right by my side. Thank you very much. That's really kind of you. I really appreciate it. You're welcome. I stand there for a moment by the smoking corpse in my fancy suit with all the screaming, the bloodshed, the death around me. Just stand there for a moment, thinking my thoughts. When I see her um, looking, I um, I just lean down into your ear as quietly as I can, because I know some people have some very sensitive hearing in here, and I say, remember, this is how the Camarilla does business. I'll remember that. We need to go. They can catch up if necessary. I'm going to start heading back down now that I've gotten a farewell. Do you release him? Uh, yes. You remember everything that's happened. But you're still kind of into it. <laughs> it. Wasn't the worst thing in the world. <laughs> Good night. Miss Ash, it was an absolute pleasure. Thank you. But of course. I beeline it straight for I Annabelle. I mean it about, uh, you know, sponsorship. Let me know. Appreciate it. Well, yeah. send my regards to Chaz. Okay. And we'll talk. Done. I would skitter mm. off. Let's assume the coterie makes its way toward the exit, leaving the blood and destruction behind them. I try and at least roughly keep a bead on where Nines and Teresa are, at least roughly. Like, we're leaving, but I mean, kind of theirs, kind of theirs type thing, like, while we're leaving. Yeah. Do I have a word with Victor still? Do I have a chance to have a word with Victor still? You're super I think fast, from so. your vantage point, you can have a okay. word with anyone you like. <laughs> All right. Um, as private as I can kind of get you, like, I know that they're nearby, but, you know, I just, mm -hmm. um, so that we're off, a little bit off to the side, I'll just say, um, excellent job and I will make sure that all the right people know what you did here tonight. Excellent. And I meant what I said, always welcome in the valley. You can do one of these in the valley. Like, it's, we've got some excellent venues. Starlight Dome, like it's, it's trust me. <sighs> I, you, we're in a hangar. You can't tell me that we don't have better than this. Excuse me? It's location. It's, it's just a, location, it's fine. Victor, I'll think about it. It's all I'll I think ask. about it. It's all I ask. I'll think about it. So with Blaine dead, the hunters scattered, the barons knowing who you are and perhaps what you stand for, with new friends at your side, our LA by night story comes to a close. For now, if you want more Vampire the Masquerade, we have some good news. You won't have to wait for season two next year. First, over on Alpha, right now, you can check out Starter Kit with murder, intrigue, love, and mystery merging in storyteller Jasmine Bueller's Chronicle. New episodes every Thursday. It premiered yesterday, so there's still time to catch up only on Alpha. Even more excitingly, there is more of this show coming this year. L.A. by Night returns <laughs> on November 30th with some special bonus episodes. We will visit the stories of each of our coterie in some shorter, character-centric epilogues at our regular 8 p.m. time. Starting on November 30th, there's one for each of our coterie characters running into the December holidays. 
And for those asking, yes, the episodes you've just enjoyed will be released on YouTube in just a few weeks. And that's on a Monday and running into next year. So if you want to get some of your friends ready for season two, that'll be a good place to start. Finally, thank you. You could have spent your Friday nights anywhere, but you chose to spend them with us. And we are very deeply grateful that you came along with us on this story. We look forward to welcoming you back next year for more L.A. by Night in Season 2. Thank you to our special guest vampire, Jessica. I'm so happy you made me do things. <laughs> and thank you for all of this. Yes, yes thank, thank you. you. Thank, you. Thank, you. thank you very much. Thank you to the crew for spending their Friday nights with us. Yeah. Thank, thank you, family. And good night.